I believe we've begun. Uh, hello, all of you watching at home. Hello, all of you in the room. Hey. Hello, all of you who are watching at work. Uh, <laughs> is it get time moving on it? Yep. Then we're good. Welcome to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th edition D&D campaign um, that I have been responsible for uh, turning into an actual thing, I suppose. With the help of my players, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Um, this will go up on YouTube later, so if you are watching and you have to go away, you can always watch it later there. I should mention that omasia.ca is now live. It's thin. It's lithe. It is small, but it will grow. It um, exists. It is the website which will be supporting the show um, with its own name, O-M-M-A-T-I-A dot C-A. Uh, there is exactly one article there, but I will, I will, by the time you watch this, if you're watching on YouTube, hopefully there are at least two. Uh, we are resuming our long-standing game. I was listening to... Um, I don't remember if it was the beginning of this particular, this previous episode, where we remarked that it had been over three years since we started, uh, which is pretty amazing. It will be three years at the end of this. Week. Yeah, so um, that's pretty cool. Uh, there are thirty, f well, thirty-six episodes technically posted. The last episode was, of course, a side quest with some other characters briefly. And with uh, some feels at the end. And well, <laughs> a few feels. Uh, and, and laying a little bit of the story for the players who have experienced some of the other sides of that story as well. Speaking of my players, how about they introduce themselves starting here on my left? Hi, I'm Jody. I'm going to be playing Clark, the uh, fighter rogue, uh, half orc fellow. And uh, he's probably about to make some big decisions. Big decisions? We'll see. Who knows? Well, there you go. And? I'm Marie. I play Elzara. Uh, I don't remember much from last episode, but <laughs> I remember be I remember feels. So <laughs> after after three years of playing, it's been three months since the last uh, of these characters. So it's a, <coughs> we'll, we'll, I'll try to give a little summary to figure out who who's who. But I kind of remember, but also like feels. <laughs> Going to near around the table. Uh, I'm Pat. I'm playing Kujima Ironbound, the Cabold Ranger Bard. Rogue. <laughs> <Person>. <laughs> Bit of everything. Hi, I'm Nax, and I play Zakis, half elf wizard. And I leveled up recently. Did I pick one or two spells? I'm pretty sure I picked one out of two. I'll deal with the other one later. Do I remember my spells? Did I level up my HPs? I scream internally, for I do not know. Well, I mean, I only gave you three months. It's fair. You yeah. know, it's, it'll take some time to catch up. So, to get us caught up a little bit. Uh, last time, in the last episode, um, actually let me back up even further just to give a general interview because it has been a while, there might be some new folks. If any of you are new that uh, picked up the cards that we've been handing out, uh, welcome. Um, you're always welcome to comment or, uh, or question uh, what's going on? Question what's going on? Sure. Challenge it all and question everything. What's going on? Uh, because we are kind of midstream. Uh, the characters have just reached level 14? 13. 13. Okay. 13. Uh, and they are, well, not in the world of Omasia at the moment. They have traveled to another place, a strange demi-plane, full plane, hard to say, called simply the Shadow. This land has no day, it has no night, it has only vague amounts of light and lots and lots of shadow. Seems to have been the ruled over realm by one demon lord, perhaps, not exactly sure, called Paturo. But there seems to have been a challenge or a coup or something. As power has shifted in the strange land, another being has been gathering power and forces, a being named Arvax, someone you had actually encountered trying to invade the Prime Material Plane. In this place, it seems that time is not the only thing that stands still. So does desire, so does hunger, so does want, so does in initiative and effort. It seems as though the people here are repeating the same patterns every day, making very little progress, having very little joy, but not really understanding where they are. Some you've encountered had been dead for a thousand years, others a few years. 
It seems as though this may be a land of the dead, of some kind. In your journeys here, after essentially accidentally arriving, one might also say that you fell into a trap, um, you have been following a couple of senses, not least of which has been a sense by Elzera of a familiar soul, one that had been lost to her for a long time, that of her fiancé, Riarden, who had died in somewhat mysterious circumstances. Suddenly, without any uh, understanding of what had happened, and seemed also to have vanished after death, including all the things that once were his. Here, a sense of that soul has been regained, finding part of it, strangely enough, in a halfling, a halfling gardener, one you almost met before, whose name had been known on the Prime Material Plane as another exceptional but otherwise ordinary gardener, attended in this case by three dryads, protected, cared for, and also looked up to. From there you found another lead into another part of the strange realm, a place referred to as Festering. You had heard people refer to it as the Festering Forest. It had an older name, you presume, as well, but most people just refer to it as Festering. A long, overgrown, and self-contained forest. One that seems to have a self-protective nature in which terrible creatures like trolls wander through. There you'd found the inverted tower of one... Uh, wow, names are just all of a sudden falling out of my head. Uh, hmm? Emerald. Emerald, thank you. One Emerald Amakir. I was doing pretty good up to that point. Emerald Amakir, a wizard of some note, and of course the head of the Library of Vatur, but who had been lost for several months. Now you've come to realize that he had spent those months here, but in that months in the Prime Material Plane, perhaps millennia had passed here. His life was one of research, but trial and turmoil. As you descended into his inverted tower and found out more of the remnants of the experiments he'd done there, including finding a familiar hag, Bone Twitch, imprisoned there, you discovered that he was working with soul energy. He was transforming souls into something else. His experiments were not necessarily as successful as he would have liked, as he found the remnants of explosions and repeated attempts to transform these things. You'd also found a, a pod which seemed to be some sort of regenerative pod, a magic that, that Zakis had heard of, but inside was a strange uh, illithid, a uh, one that seemed to know a little bit more than you expected, but was not willing to, uh, or rather you were not willing to work with it, instead of deciding to, to, to take it off. <laughs> and you destroyed it. You destroyed it in the very bottom of the tower. And you also found the main experimentation room. And with some investigation and some time, you put together and worked out what must have happened. The soul energy was being transformed, being transformed into some sort of container. After leaving there and pursuing the now familiar sense of the partial soul, you traveled back through the festering forest. Blazing a trail up ahead was Alzara in her fury form, keeping back the hungry vines that wished to devour and entrap everything. You traveled for you're not exactly sure how long. It had the impression of hours, but all of you found yourself exhausted, both from the climb up the tower as well as moving through this forest. The forest grew denser, but also more alive, until suddenly you started seeing living moss, and trees would seem to have life in them, birds and other animals. The birds seemed to be real, as uh, Kujima. Uh, did I get it right? Ironbound? Kujan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, still second-guessing myself even after all these months. As Kujan managed to take down one of the birds and quickly eat it, it had everything you would think a bird would have. 
but what also felt like a distant memory, as though you haven't tasted anything in years. Traveling further and deeper on, you saw more and more signs of life, until you encountered a gigantic snake. It seemed to be curious about you, but not threatened, and took you indeed to meet what it referred to as the Great Lady, the master of this forest. As you move deeper and in deeper following it, you did indeed find more signs of life. Beautiful vines, flowers that were very familiar to Alzera, one of her favorites, in fact. A yellow flower, I believe, with a black stamen. One that um, was a prized flower. Moving further in, you discover what appears to be an ancient druid grove, complete with a number of druids, seeming to live in harmony with what's around them. A living grove in the midst of all of this terrible blankness. The, the unliving nature of the rest of the forest, other than its motiv uh, motivation, other than its, its animation. That, the only thing it seems to be alive. Here, that sense of familiarity grew almost unbearable for Elzera. You were greeted by the Great Lady, Zora Leanda, who you recognized in a couple of different ways. Yeah, no, I'm like here. <laughs> you recognized it as your great aunt, I think, or great uh, grandmother, I think, at this point. Uh, or actually, grandmother, sorry. She is your, your mother's mother. No, we are. Uh Liaris. I'm sorry, Liaris. I made that same mistake, and I listened back to the episode, and I made the mistake there. I should have noted that. Yes, Liaris' uh, 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 mother, who we never really talked about all that much, and you hadn't seen very often. You also got the impression that she was extraordinarily uh, old, even then. The other way that you recognized her is some of you had seen in a vision as you fell in through the trap. Two people discussing the, the entrance into this realm. One of them was Emerald Emekir, and the other held a very familiar staff, the staff you now see her carrying. It looks like a withered piece of, of uh, wood, somehow still alive and with growth at the very top. Zora Leanda welcomes you in and invites you to a meal. You have a natural meal, something of berries and fruit and vegetables and all of it fresh and delightful. This seems to be an oasis, a, a paradise. Nonetheless, while you're sitting there, Elzera is distracted by the thing which has been emanating this all along. What appears almost like a large glowing egg stands taller than a, than a person does. It has a radiance and energy, a health which seems to emanate bright from it. And then you start also hearing that familiar voice. One you'd heard in dreams recently, but that's it calling to you. It had beckoned you to come find it, to help it before it was too late. And there it is, achingly within distance. When the meal is finished, Zora Leanda invited you all to come into the center of the grove, a winding path that led to a stone, uh, stone chair, a throne, essentially, where she sat and talked with you. As you talked, and more was learned, Suddenly, there was a shadow which moved over everything. Far above you, the massive sign of a dragon, with smaller dragons along with it, smashing through the upper trees. And the voice that you've come to know of the brood mother of the black dragons here, Givanetta, taunting down that she had finally found her quarry. In a moment, crashing through the woods ahead of you, and above you, I should say, a smaller dragon descends and crashes down into the front where the banquet had happened before. It seemed to have a wriggling surface, and actually Elzera would have noticed with her keen sight that it was several others that were holding on to the sides of it, using it like a, a vehicle, and then leaping off when it, they got down to the ground. Zora Leanda looks with not exactly fright, more anger, imperiousness. Uh, a uh, which of you has the highest insight? 
I get a plus four. Mm, plus four as well. Okay. I got plus five. What? You get plus five inside? Yeah. Mm, I forgot. Okay. Something that you would notice, Zacchaeus, is it is not fear that she portrays. It is a sort of sense of destiny. As if she knew this was going to happen eventually. And now that it has, she's actually happy about it. In that instance, she turns to the rest of you. I charge you. Protect the egg. It is the heart of the grove. And with that, leaps upward and forms the shape of a giant eagle launching upward. And that is where we'll begin today. We will probably want to roll initiative. Mm -hmm. I will change over to the map screen so people at home can see what we're all fighting over. <coughs> In the center, that is a round uh, uh, hedge, essentially, a spiral hedge. You can consider it to be at least five feet, feet thick most places. It gets a little bit thicker towards the center. Where's the hedge? The spiral in the center. The black line. Where you guys oh, okay, are. That's a hedge, yeah. And actually, everybody's in the center at the moment. Radix is there as well. Uh, it is about five feet thick. I didn't want to bother making a thick line there, so keep that in mind as you're moving through. Uh, it is made up of a very familiar, sharp-looking thorn, the same sort of stuff you've been fighting all this time, but somehow here it's been tamed and controlled. Um, there's also a sense, in a way, that by controlling it, it is the imposition of the druid's will on this, a mastery over nature. While she's also said that others should not have mastery over nature, she's clearly demonstrated her, it herself. It is about uh, 15 feet tall, for the most part, as well. So you've only seen the dragon, the large dragon, descend and then go hidden behind the uh, the trees. So we will start with uh, 25 to 30. Yeah. Uh, is initiative uh, one of the ones we're getting disadvantage because of the exhaustion? Is it a uh, skill or is it a stat? It is a, uh, a stat. Because there's no separate skill. You can't increase it. So. Well, yeah, I've got a boost on it, but that's bard. So. I'm ready to bring... bring in our old natural one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll go through and call it just in a second here. Uh, I got seven. Well, I rolled dragon. single. <laughs> I rolled single digits. Two. I said, whoa, dragon, that would slow anybody down. Uh, you, that that dagger, you, you got me. Let yeah. me down. That looks like a thing. <laughs> Sorry. There's a thing. All right. I should have done this rolling beforehand. I didn't think of that. If I got all the way over here, it doesn't sound too loud on the <laughs> You're probably fine. You're probably fine. Actually, hold on. I'll be right back. Yeah. <coughs> Yay, scratchy throat. <coughs> okay. All right. 25 to 30. 20 to 25. 15 to 20. 19. 19, okay. Clark. Clark. Uh, now I'm trying to remember which way it goes. It goes this way. Yes. Okay. Whatever way you want. And. Uh, would you got a 19 or 18? I got a 19. 19, okay. Ready to just after you. Uh, as does. Uh, 10 to 15. 10. Okay. You rolled a 1, you still got a 10? Mm -hmm. I don't think wow. I'd worry too much then. <laughs> I have a plus 9, uh, which is why I will always roll 1s on initiative. <laughs> <laughs> I have 8. Okay, just a second. I may need to move things over. So I think I have all the things this time. Uh, so that was 10 to 15, 5 to 10. You have an 8? Yep. 7. And a 7. And that looks like everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a full lineup this time. Mm -hmm. So you are all in the center. 
you do not, uh, well, you hear a lot of motion around you in a commotion, but you don't necessarily see anything at this point. Clark, you're up first. Yeah. Uh, how's everybody looking? Like just just looking around, what's the what's the feel of the room here? Well, in, you can't in, see in, anything outside of there. In, you're the only one. The, in, you're in the, the only one in the center. How tall is the hedge? Fifteen. Okay. So I'm just trying to get an assessment of how everybody in our little circle back there is doing. Well, how do you guys look? You look concerned, I'm a, frightened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a little eager. Beat to shit, but yeah. I look a bit better. <laughs> there was right. a sense of urgency in Zora's voice. As in, a, we were tasked with a responsibility, and something big seems to have come along. Yeah, a clerical charge. Out to, out <laughs> okay, the so you're going to start the round the spiral? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, everyone's going to have to dash for a couple of rounds. Okay, so just go ahead and move yourself around. Uh, okay. Because one level of exhaustion. Wait, 5, 10, 15, 20. Five, 10, 15, 20. And I'll do a dash action to get the next one. Okay. Whee! Right. We're in the circle. What is double move? <coughs> so I'm spending all my actions to move to, to dash, and then I have a I have a um, and you're a rogue a rogue bonus, ah, nice. bonus yeah. dash. So, so even though I'm yeah. moving slowly, I can sort of keep keep up if I'm dashing really hard. Yep. Yep. Uh, what is your passive perception? Uh, eighteen. Okay. As you're running around there, mm-hmm. um, you are starting to hear the sounds of fighting happening in all directions. Um, you're hearing the sounds of two com- two types of combatants. Um, you're picking out one, which is the the cries of elves who are shouting and fighting. Um, but there's something weird about their voices. Um, they sound weak and tired. The other ones, however, are are more hissing and snarling. Uh, they sound invigorated. Okay. Uh, Radix will move into the grove beside her and vanish. So uh, you can actually just put her as a straight line out to 40 feet as she passes through the grove without without any resistance. Which direction? Uh, that, towards the front. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can get to the egg if you want. Okay. She's just peeking uh, out. And you hear, um, all of you hear uh, Radix give a very loud shout of surprise. So whatever she found out there is scary. Okay. Uh, let's see. That changes what I do. Okay. That's that. Kuzima. Hmm. I don't really have anything I can't do, so I'll just run up by Clark. Okay. And you should be able to get the same, same distance, I think. I get 70 feet, so. Yeah. Okay. I did 60 signal a little further if you want. Nope. I think you were standing a little further back, so... Okay. I'm just here to make sure you guys live, so I'm hanging oh, okay. with you. Cool. All right. Uh, you hear all of you... Uh, actually... And I... I uh, eh, screw it. I lose stealth. Uh, do you understand Draconic? Does anybody else understand Draconic? You understand it. I do. Okay. Uh, both of you hear a loud, uh, uh, roared uh, command in Draconic. Um, it has this sort of cadence of uh, almost like like rolling water, weirdly enough, as the, the words kind of roll onto each other as the, the roar grows longer. The rest of you hear a loud roar, clearly from that dragon which landed, but it's incomprehensible. The two of you understand it to say... Um, uh, take the egg and kill the rest. Tear this place apart. And there's a <coughs> there's a joy in that declaration. I just told Clark she's saying the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to me. Elzara. Um. So I had activated my shield at the end mm-hmm. of the last session. Um. So I'm going to. Uh, not use the arrow that I have knocked and turn into an arrow elemental because Radix is alone up front. And fly over. Okay. With uh, my 100 feet of movement. Can I have the arrow elemental? 
Yeah, you've had a short rest Actually, since last year, the fire alarm. Yes. So. I would be back there and still still. Go it's, it's that well, it's that first movement or first round thing. I have 10 extra movement. So I could actually stealth and get close to Clark. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I have the air elemental behind you? Yep. I'm assuming first you're floating oh. upward. Yeah. Okay. The first thing she oh. does is punch oh. Zach as a man. When you float up, you do see and survey the rest of the scene. So. Uh, what you see is that from further down in the grove, there is a collection of figures moving in. Um, you can see their serpentine bodies, roughly humanoid, but with serpents' heads and a variety of different uh, 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 body shapes, all humanoid, but they're, they're lizard folk. That's what you recognize them as. Um, up ahead you see this dragon, gigantic, but still dwarfed by the massive dragon that's flying overhead and you're about to engage with, uh, with uh, Zora. Um, you see that it has disgorged numerous of these lizard folk who are moving through, through. The other thing that you see is where there were at least a dozen elves out there. There are now a dozen corpses. Not just dead. They look like they've withered and grayed and hollowed out. Some of them are lying at the feet of the uh, the lizard folk that are there, but some of them are distant away and don't look like they've been hit with anything. You also start to notice that the green isn't quite as strong as it was before in the foliage around you. Okay. Uh, I am going to hold my action to hurt anyone who tries to touch the egg. Okay. Because nobody is touching the same. Mama bear mode and engaged. Gotcha. Mama wind. Okay. Mama wind. Sure. Uh, at the end of that round. Oh, sorry. We have uh, we have Zakis. He's around the corner on my on my list here. Okay. <laughs> so you've seen the uh, you've seen Elzera rise up into the into the air. Uh, Radix yes, vanish. Sorry. And the two of them take off running. Okay. I will cast fly on myself. Good call. What do I see? All the things. So the same the description I gave of, <laughs> of, to her. How big is the egg, by the way? Uh, the egg is a is a probably at least seven feet tall, okay. and probably ten feet around at its at its largest point. A large size. Thing. And is that the friendly snake that escorted us? Uh, you don't see him. Okay. Uh, he's actually up, right up against the the uh, the hedge, so you wouldn't see him unless you passed closer, or you go higher. But uh, that way seems pretty safe, so I will go that way. Okay. Five, six. Okay. Now what do I see? Uh, again, as I described before, you see the corpses of elves, those druids you had seen before. You do see the snake there. It seems to be moving in this direction. Okay. Is, is it our ally snake? It's the giant snake you spoke to before. The All giant right. constrictor snake that led you in. I'm going to go near him. Okay. Because uh, it's uh, probably safer. Actually, I'll hide behind you. <laughs> Are you going to hide? <laughs> well, you don't have an action left, I guess. Because uh, you cast the spell and then, then moved. Yeah. What's the movement of flight? Sixty feet. Okay. Keep in mind, you had to go up fifteen. Yeah. To get above the hedge. Yeah. Those so. Here, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got three more. Uh, well, you'd have three to go up. Yeah. Then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's fifty feet. You You're basically there. at sixty feet right there. Uh, and you'd still be 15 feet up. Okay. Uh, the blue lines on the outside indicate that the forest is essentially closed in on itself, and you can see movement in the forest beyond. <laughs> are you coming down to the ground, or are you hovering? Just hovering, like okay. 10 feet up. If you can just put a die underneath or something, or a salt shaker, that oh, works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to indicate that, so I don't forget. So... <coughs> end of that round. Overhead you can hear the fight is uh, fully underway. Zora very quickly had gotten there, probably spent uh, as much as she could just to fly there as quickly as possible. Um, and you hear the taunting voice of Givanetta. It's It rumbles in common, strangely enough, as though intended for everyone to understand it. When the world began, I was there. You came later, but you remember what it was like before the gods appeared. It was perfect. Join me, and we can reach that state once more. 
to that, the response from uh, Zora uh, is almost laughing. Join you? Never. You're a plague, a cancer, a blight. Again, Zacchaeus in particular, you, you get that sense of thrill. She's not scared. She's not angry. She's having fun. As the two of them go overhead, there is a, a, uh, a large smashing sound as the large dragon is still, with the, the growth of the forest returning as it did before when it passed through, just smashing through it almost as if it's not there. Um, each of you uh, make a dexterity saving throw as bits and pieces of the trees overhead fall down. Thirteen. Saving throws are not no, not at this level of exhaustion. Good to know. <laughs> so what did you get? Starting here. Eighteen. Eighteen. Not twenty for twenty-five. Not 20. Thirteen. Twenty-five. Thirteen. Thirteen. Wow, you guys did really good. As large trunks of the trees fall all around you and uh, collide with the ground, uh, some of them kind of almost sticking in like spears, uh, we actually lose this guy. Oh, no. <laughs> As uh, one of them basically pinioned him to the ground. Wait, was he a bad guy? Uh, that okay. was one of the lizard men, one of the larger ones, actually. All right, no big loss. Uh, is pinioned to the ground. <coughs> Uh, and his form Ooh, around the, the tree <laughs> uh, stays there. Hmm? It stays there. It does not dissipate, as you've seen other bodies do so. Uh, let's see, the next round, starting with Clark. Yeah, another run for 60 feet, please. All right. Uh, maybe Pat, you can help. You're starting to hear now a lot more sound on that side. There's a lot less of those elven uh, cries of, of fighting and a lot more of those hissing victory cries. Thank you. I think I have to be in the middle-ish because there's a hedge. Yeah, it's basically a five-foot hedge on each side, okay. so there's a thin path that goes through the whole thing. Uh, Radix? Uh, yeah. Radix will look at the scene and let's see, what do I want to have her do? Yeah, um, she's looking shocked at the druids around her, um, trying to cap uh, capture the situation, trying to understand what's happening. Uh, and we'll... Yeah. Uh, from where she is, she moves forward, steps up on or leaps up onto the table. And then uh, you see her kind of reach backwards, reaching for something. Three thorns appear in her arm and she whips her arm forward letting them loose on those on that one creature right there well the net 20 was nice uh, All right. Right, yeah. there we go it's on now man uh, wow okay it's only a little thorn but it did a lot of damage uh, okay I'm right in the island and that guy is Double red. All right. Uh, yeah, as the the thorn uh, <coughs> catches him, and you see the the other two thorns just sort of sort of scatter wild and don't hit anything in particular. Um, one of them, probably the first one, which is the most accurate one, uh, kind of uh, goes and lodges itself in its throat, and it gags and coughs and spits blood. It's not dead, but it's not happy. Uh, now it's... Okay. Uh, we're going to move from that group. If uh, Pat, if you can help me out, the standing mini, the red shaman, essentially, uh, is moving counterclockwise around 30. So it'll move Say basically right beside where oh, the the one behind it, the actual red shaman. Yeah. Uh, it'll move thirty in the same direction. Yeah. That's all it's going to do for now. Kuzaima, 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 Ironbound. Mm. I'll never get it right. Uh, yeah. Just continue. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Okay. From ahead of you, you hear the dragon, what everyone else might uh, might think of as a cough, but you know it to be uh, a laugh. And it roars. So, yeah, you're all aware of it, and you're all within range. Make a wisdom saving throw as the oh, war that's... rattles you to the very core. Its range is 120 feet. Okay. Wait, are we still exhausted? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't affect saves, so. though. Okay. Not at this level. Ten. Ten? Probably okay. a fail. Twenty-two. Well, how much? Twenty-two? Oof. Okay. Twenty, because I didn't... <laughs> All right. I didn't forget to add my proficiency bonus. The two of you, Zakus and Elzera, uh, it washes over you, um, but there's a higher calling here. You, your your mentor, was through all of this, and you remember back to how important. Or what else would what would Zakus hold on to as a as a way to defeat fear? The fact that he has to get back to the library. <laughs> he has to keep it standing, and there's like a lot of books that he was planning on reading, and it's like, no, it can't end right now. I got shit to do. Okay, so he kind of <laughs> hauls back into his own uh, resolve, yeah, like not his today. routine. Okay, how about Ozera? What was the core for strength her for her? The egg. Yeah, it's it almost feels as though its presence for you uh, reinforces you, not actually mechanically, but it does feel like a reinforcement. The other two, you so are close. frightened. Mm. Um, and if I uh, uh, call for this again, the two of you are immune to this effect now. Cool. For 24 hours. Whatever 24 How hours How would you measure here. that? <laughs> um, are they from, immune to it from saving? As yes. Well, okay, so we're all basically just immune to it. No, no, you guys didn't save. The two of them are immune to it okay. because they saved. Uh, gotcha. The rest of you are frightened for one minute. Uh, what's the target of the frightening so I don't go near it, please? The, the dragon. dragon. That dragon? No, this the one dragon? in front of you. Okay. You could clearly yeah. hear it moving, in, and almost like a wind. We, the we just can't move rolls. forward anymore. Yeah, the, the, well, you can't move toward visibly. If you can't see, you can still move. Uh, but you can't move to to it being there. Once, once we okay. see it, we're like, yep, that's the thing. Yeah. We're not going near there. We're on the other gotcha. way. Now, you will get a chance to remake that saving throw at the mm -hmm. end of each of your turn, so keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, now, it moves forward. Uh, kind of shouldering the two of them off to the side, almost as an afterthought, and looks down at the tiny little dryad which dared to threaten it. Bye bye. Uh, oh, actually, and she has she to roll. We love you. Uh, uh, we. <laughs> oh man, those are. <laughs> it's, it's the royal we. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, yeah, no, she's frightened. She's she's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's there, she's looking defiant, she has her hand kind of back from where she had swung it, but then she just sort of looks up as the dragon towers over her. Uh, and then, uh, in an instant, in this strange, snake-like way, not entirely unfamiliar in a way, uh, because you actually had a snake bite you not too long ago, and it was very sudden and quick. It's almost that same kind of motion as it dips forward and bites at her. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Uh, the bite clenches onto her. That's d d8. Although it was a better roll to walk it on the d10. No, it's the same roll. Okay. Plus fate. Uh... So, uh, do, 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 do. nothing quickly. There we go. Um, as its teeth lock into it, and it breathes out slightly on her, its fetid oh, no. and sharp breath washing over her. Uh, it rears its head back, and you can see now the this large gaping wound in her stomach. She seems diminished. Her her face, face is almost uh, crimson from where probably the breath itself sort of peeled back part of her skin. Uh, and then it takes a swipe with a claw. Oh, yeah, no, she's not that good. Uh, unfortunately, the claw connects as well. 
I hadn't got all my dice out. This is silly of me. better faster at basic math by now. Uh, and then a second claw. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a nat 20. It was not. No, it was however that. Oh. And with the second claw, you see the claw scrape across your chest and she lets out a cry and falls limp to the ground. Oh no. So you can knock over her her portrait as unfortunately standing up to the dragon was maybe not the smartest thing she's done. But yeah. A guide. Uh, is she making death save or death save? She's a named character, so she does she make is, death She is a named <laughs> character. She is a named character. <laughs> uh, that means it is the rest of them converging. So move to here. There. Uh, actually, he'll move up there. I'll move to there, so I'm actually in striking distance. This one moves here. This one moves up on the table. This one follows its master. And this one will move to there. I guess it's got range. This is fine. So, that one can't get you, but the other one behind it. The larger one, uh, red, white, white, uh, throws a spear in your direction, but I don't think a 16 hits you. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, it does? <laughs> Everything hits pretty much. Uh, I wasn't sure if the if your mage armor put it up above that. Nope, no. It goes from 11 to 14. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you take six points of slashing damage as the thing spears into you and kind of connects. Uh, let's say it connects left shoulder, and it kind of hit, it hits into you, and then kind of and falls of off. And of course, fly falls off. That's three d six damage. Unfortunately, you plummet the, the ground. You were fifteen feet near. I said I went down five feet. Okay. Okay. Feet. So two d six. So two d six is used. Actually, make a dexterity. S no, actually, no. That's a particular cost. Really, and it's like almost max damage. <laughs> Come down in a, in a heap. I, I thought it was one d six per ten feet. Uh, actually, you're right. So reroll 1d6. Or just roll a 1d6 damage, not 2d6. Two, that's a lot better. There you go. It's still kind of a crumple on the ground, and you find yourself <laughs> at the feet of the one that was moving towards you. But not on your head. But no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one beside you, Elzera, will take a swing. That is an 11 to hit. I don't think that even comes close. The one on the other side with the long pike will take a swing in. That is a 24 to hit. It hits. Uh, what are they hitting me with? This is, a, it looks like a, a, a rather primitive looking pike. It looks fancier on the actual mini there, but it's it's really just a, a smaller one. Uh, only does seven points of piercing damage, just no. regular piercing damage. No regular piercing, so three. Yep. So it sort of swings right through you. <coughs> trying to, it's, It looks like it's trying to figure out where your center mass is and sort of like moving and dodging. You can see its whole body kind of shifting, almost serpent-like as well as it swishes right through you. Aim for the googly eyes. Uh, I don't think the rest of them have that. So that sets it to Elzara's turn. Hola. And before you, you see the somewhat lifeless body of the dryad, or twitching slightly, I should say. Uh, I can't do much about that right now, unfortunately. Uh, I know it's color. Uh, I am going at to make a slam attack on two red dot. Okay. Whoever's on my left there. Okay. Uh, that is an 18 on the dice, so 26. Oh yeah, that's a hit. Uh, yeah. Uh, that is 12 damage of, or uh, sorry, 14 damage of the magical bludgeoning. Okay. You... Uh, the buffeting uh, hits him pretty strongly, and you can see he's kind of lifted off his feet and kind of looked a little, little uh, wary of, of you now. Uh, that was one hit. Second hit is a <laughs> method uh, 22. Oh, yeah. Um, with the same amount of damage. <laughs> okay. An 8 and a 4 on the dice. And that's the same one twice? Same one twice. It is down. Cool. As you how describe how the attack hits him. 
<laughs> okay. So I, uh, I send him flying. Yeah. So he goes flying backwards uh, after kind of a, they lifted off his feet slightly by the f- first hit, and then without any w- ability to recover, uh, is knocked uh, senseless and flying. Uh, his body no collapses. No. no. Oh, he's way over there. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you. It lands left. on his feet. <laughs> your left. Oh. All right, are you going to move or do anything else? I am defending this egg. Okay, Zakis. You are prone, uh, by the way. I am going... Mm, no, these in my... I'm going to get up. Okay, that's half your movement. And... I hear magic happening. Nice. There's <laughs> lots of dice being gathered together, Ooh. so that's interesting. What are you going to I do? I will cast Lightning Bolt. I see there's like a nice line of like okay. a bunch of different things. All right. So Including I will cast the on. Lightning Bolt in this direction. Okay. So all of them have to make a save. They really versus... are lined up. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it three, lizard, three lizard yeah. men and a dragon. Okay. What's yeah. the, the, the full extent? How far can that go? 120 feet? 120 feet. Yeah, that's what I figured. All right. Uh, let me know who you're hitting first of all so I can roll the save. Let me make a deck save. Yep, I need to know which ones they are, though. Uh, this double one. white, red, double white, and dragon, and triple red. And what save is it? Dex. Dex of 17. Oh, that one on the no, first uh, one. 19. No good. 19, okay. Nat 20 on the second one, so the second one saves. Dragon. Dragon gets a nat 20. That was kind of weird. And a 7, so... The first one gets hit, the second one, uh, and the dragon save, and the final one gets hit. And that was 29 damage. Okay, just tell me what what colors they are then. White, white, red? White, white, red. Wiped out. Okay. Obliterate. Uh, triple red. Is that the one? Oh, that's the other side? Yeah. Okay, triple red. Uh, oh, yeah. Also obliterated. Uh, the dragon and, and double, white. double white both take 14. Uh, Double White was the one that got hit by the spikes and actually goes down. Woo! Uh, This one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, As you're clearing out some of those... And with my remaining movement, I will... What kind of damage was that? Lightning Uh, lightning bolt, yeah. And how much was it? 14, you said? Uh, 29 slash 14. Yeah, 14 for the dragon. All right. It seems unamused by that. Slightly phased. And uh, that's Zakis. Are you going to move? You I, I already have All right. like that way. <laughs> and, uh, bonus action? Hmm? Bonus I action? Don't one. Okay. Um, up above you, the fight continues. Uh, you hear the rejoinders back and forth between the dragon and uh, the able to speak while being a large eagle at the moment. Uh, something you've never been able to really manage, but. Uh, you suspect her power is somewhat more uh, extensive than your own. Uh, as given it a response, a plague. Yes, I am living ruin. I am the devourer of hope. I am the death of hope and the birth of a new world. To which the response is, the only death here will be your own. And from the eagle's form, bursting out of the chest, there is a brilliant and brilliant enough to to light this entire scene. Blast of pure, golden, perfect sunlight bursts out of her chest and is radiating towards the dragon. Catches the dragon in the side, which lets out a surprised uh, yell. Uh, You can see that it continues on, and it's actually cutting through some of the upper levels of the trees. However, this fight being above you does present certain problems. Everyone make a dexterity saving Mm -hmm. throw as once again the trees start falling down from above. Twenty-three. Seventeen. Twenty-three as well. Twelve. Nice. I rolled a two. Oh no. <laughs> Dex over there. <laughs> so, uh, above fifteen, all except for you, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as you manage to kind of get out of the way, and you can see now that uh, right by you, where that tree is, mm-hmm. a large limb actually comes and cuts the, the hedge down. So if you want to turn that tree sideways, effectively there's a gap there this where you can way? climb over the tree rather than actually going all the way through. Okay. Um, similarly, on the other side where that tree is, is uh, located, it falls down and actually cuts through both uh, levels of the, of the hedge, the interior one as well. 
-hmm. So behind you, uh, you see that a tree has fallen and kind of broken through the hedge. You take seven points of uh, bludgeoning damage, essentially, however, as a limb comes uh, mm -hmm. crawl, falling down and kind of cascades down towards you. Clark, you're up. Uh, <coughs> I think Clark will stay put because he can't really move forward. He knows where the sound came from. He does, although so he can't see it. He knows where it came from. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to read that as okay. not approach that direction. You do hear the sounds of commotion and fighting behind you, however. Right. Um, Clark's going to close his eyes, focus on trying to see through the bad one, and uh, open his mind to whatever voices the glaive has for him to hear. Okay. He's going to focus and recenter. Okay. Um, flip the coin. Sure. Coin flip. I see treasures. Okay. As you focus and look through that eye, mm -hmm. you feel calm. It's blurry. It's difficult to see, but you feel as though your actions are guided by the weapon itself. Okay. While you're looking through that eye, you will not be considered frightened. However, you will be disadvantaged to strike. Right. As you feel that the voices crawling through you, and half of them are sort of soothing, and the other half are ready for war. Right. And they're calling out for blood. Okay. Uh, so if you wish to take your movement, you can do so. Sure. Uh, Clark will attempt to uh, traverse the hedge. Okay. It will be an athletics or acrobatics roll. Sure. Let's do the athletic type things. Uh... It is a disadvantage because you're still. That's correct. You're still uh, exhausted. Okay, that's a lower number anyway. Um, eighteen. Okay, it counts as difficult terrain. Actually, no. Sorry, you rolled an eighteen. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> so he'll, well, I guess, hop. Over. Which side of the of the tree do you want to be on? Yeah, I think he's aware that there's a lot of danger that way. Okay. But he knows that there's other stuff coming this way. So. And you do see a serpentine form coming in your direction. Yeah, let's focus urgently. on that guy. All right. And you can't see Buddy over there. Yeah. Well, I'm not moving closer to scary things, so I'm sure I'll be all right. Okay. Did you get to save? Yeah, you save for... Maybe? Right? Yeah, you do get to save at the end of your turn. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do that then. No. Okay. Yeah, you can still... You, you're still aware of it, yeah. uh, even though you can kind of ignore it by looking through the other eye. Uh, that was Radix. Let's see what's happening next. Ah, it sees you. Do, 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 do. Can it do at this distance? Does she look like she's succeeding or failing her essay? Uh, you'd have to take a closer look to find out. It's, it's busy right now. It's busy. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of stuff going on. Right now. Also with dragons. Okay. Uh, you hear this hissing uh, voice as it begins to weave and cast a spell uh, at you, the one that's down there. Uh, it calls out and seems to summon forth uh, energy from around your feet as the ground erupts in vines, not unlike the ones you just came through, trying to twist and turn around you. Uh, make a strength saving throw for Me? Clark. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, strength saving throw. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. The vines wrap around your feet, but having fought these several times before, you're you're actually used to the way that they move, and you manage to sidestep the, the majority of them. Mm. And it seems like the effect dissipates when you do. Congratulations, you did not get hit by the instant yeah. tangle. Uh, let's see. That's their turn. Uh, oh yes. So the rest of them now, uh, having heard this, all move. So they are now all moving at thirty. Beyond the shaman, if they can, if they can. So a straight line of distance as they can. Ten, twenty, thirty. Okay. Shut it a little Ten, twenty, thirty. Ten, twenty, thirty. Ten, twenty, thirty. That would be perfect for a lightning bolt. Ten, twenty, thirty. Yeah, and the other way is actually kind of half blocked off of them anyway. So but they've heard this, their, their sub-leader uh, doing something over in that direction. Uh, that is time for Ironbound. 
you hear a lot of commotion on the other side of the hedge, mm -hmm. up ahead of you, but you do see the gap behind you. Uh, we'll sneak 20 feet. No, 15 feet. Uh, and then I'm going to cast plant growth. Okay. That's not a choice. I like it. And basically, everything from here backward, like this line through the middle of the thing for mm -hmm. convenience sake, and here gets massively overgrown and takes four times the normal movement to move through. <laughs> you want to mark just on the map? Just a sure. little indication in those spaces that they're basically that crazy wild terrain. How big a, a radius can you 120 affect? 120 feet. 120 feet radius? It. or? or huh? Wow. Uh, plant growth. Ah, 150 foot range. All normal plants within a 100 foot radius of the target spot. Wow. I'm just going to center it on me, but I'm, and I can choose the area that's not affected or is, so I'm just not going to affect that area. I'm going to affect all that area. Firm's right. friend. That is that is a massive It effect. is yep. a massive spell. Yes, I'm surprised. Okay, cool. That's the one action uh, version. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's technically all normal plants. Whether anything is normal here is a question, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest it's fine. Well, are, things are normal enough that I can eat the birds. It's true. Um, you get the safe, I guess. So yeah, the the hedge itself kind of. Oh, actually, that. as you cast that, I'm not casting it on that either. You notice so that the the hedge itself. Uh, it seems to eagerly embrace this additional growth, as though. Uh, you are releasing it from a control that has been placed upon it, and it starts to to actually grow out faster. I'm fine with that, and seems to 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 whip out as well. You notice that it's not entirely to your strict lines as it grows yeah. on its own a little bit as well. As long as there's that path, I'm good. Okay, for now there's that path, but you get the sense that now awakened it may not actually stop. Yep, what have you that's fine. Okay, that was your action. And my movement. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Save, okay. Save for against fear. No. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I don't have any other action stuff. Yeah. Uh, 16. That meets, so you are now calmed by you being able to take control of the area. Uh, the snake. The snake moves, uh, actually, just a second. <laughs> you see the snake uh, undulate and move as the gro the growth uh, grove itself, the, the hedge, begins to shift and lose its shape and start to reach out towards it. It moves quickly inward, uh, five feet straight away from the hedge, mm -hmm. and then moves past you as it moves uh, 20 feet down. So it's basically going 20 feet around the curve, five feet from the hedge. No, further in, so it's that's twenty feet, then it's right beside you. It seems to have purpose in mind. Okay. Well I'm glad it's beside me. That way I can hide behind it. You, oh sure, you can try that. Uh here's that dinner you wanted. <laughs> have a uh let's see. Now it's these guys. Let's see here. So I mean surely the, the snake looks more threat look, looks more threatening than this like scrawny half elf. This one will move up. Uh, as a hunter, I'd shoot you first. <laughs> You're way more of a threat than a snake. Gets to about there. Um, pulls out another javelin. Tosses it in your direction. Misses badly. Does it? I catch it. No, he's not a monk. Okay. <laughs> Although a monk would be a, make a good librarian, I suspect. Um, He'd be good at And it kind of hisses, it kind of throws the thing. <sighs> As if it's ready to fight well, you. Well, uh, Let's see. Uh, which one did it go on? Ah, yes. Um, the dragon moves forward, looks down at the little dryad, and sort of chuckles to itself. Uh, Step. <laughs> no. Really. Tempting, but no. In this case, it chuckles, rears back its head once more, and lets loose again with the sound. Uh, all of you who have not become immune to this, again, hear the sound of its roar rolling over you. If you're already affected by it, then you're not affected. Uh, uh, so did my save, save make me immune? Uh, 
your save did make you immune. Okay. Yeah. So. That's just you. So Although you're already affected. I'm already so affected. There's no effect to you, but mm -hmm. it is an effect to the snake. Oh, no. Uh, and actually, it's the only other one on the field that could be affected. A lizard man? Um, they seem to be immune to it for some reason. You see, however, standing right beside the snake, as the roar passes over it, there's a shiver that seems to run down the coil of the snake, and it sort of shakes its head. And it looks up with new purpose, and is ready to go. Uh, let's see. What's about these guys here? Yeah. These guys can move in. That one's going to stay where it is because it likes to get a distance. You can. This one will move in. There. Another guy over there? Dead. I could well, move. no, there was another one in that side. There's one guy right there. No, but just stay where it is. And attack again. Oh, I, yeah, the dragon has to move too. It's trampling all the furniture? And does actually just sort of kick aside the body of. Uh, does it do any damage? Not 20. Uh -huh. As you see Radix fly away from the the hit, as it's more or less you're sort of kicking it out of the way, as she comes flying, it kind of smashes into that tree. That's like really awesome mulch, though. Um, it oh takes a nip at the cloud. Because, you know, cloud. Cloud. Uh, let's see. What is this nip going to be? Actually, you know what? Nah, it's just going to nip at you. Oh, yeah, it comes up too short and literally starts grasping air. Mm. As you hear its jaws kind of clamp shut like the sound of an avalanche. It takes another swipe at you. Ooh, that's probably bad. Uh, 17 to hit. Uh, meets. There we go. Uh, you take... 10 points of slashing damage, just plain old slashing damage. So five. And then tries it again. For a 26 to hit. For another 12 points of slashing damage. I just kind of slashing away at you and you can, again, you kind of hear that guttural laugh as though it's actually kind of having fun. I'm fine. Uh, the one in front of you will take its swing I don't, uh, 14 probably doesn't hit you. 17. No. Trying to hit. And the one with the pike. Uh, rolls a 16. So, they're not doing so well this time. Elzer, however, you are up. Hello. You, you're seeing this sort of disregard for the dry, dryad as well. I have dragon. Uh, I have my egg to worry about. Um, hmm. Am I try to hit the dragon. Okay. Uh, that is a dirty 20. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, four, seven, ten, twelve magical bludgeoning. Okay. As you kind of basically boop it on the nose. I imagine as it snaps forward, you kind of then lunge and then crack it across the face. Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to roll my counter there. Uh, that's a natural 16 plus 8. To so 24 to hit. Okay. Yep, that hits. Uh, and 8. What is it with me for unrolling an 8 and a 4? Uh, so that is 14. Okay. Magical bludgeoning. All right. Uh, and I am going to take up the same space as the egg. Okay. Uh, I believe one of them gets an attack of opportunity. Uh, yeah, the one that's close. Actually, uh, they both do because you're moving outside of its ra of the range. The other one has a long ten foot range. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so first of all, the one straight next to you, uh, twenty five to hit. Wow. Actually, will hit. Or, uh, oops, wrong one. Where are you here? For four points of uh, piercing damage. Cool. The one with the pike. Uh, that's a 19 to hit. Cool. Back here. For seven points of piercing damage, as they both poke at you. 
Uh, and the dragon, actually, as well. Nope, because I hit it. Oh, right, you have the... Mm-hmm. Which one is that? Is that... Uh, mobile. Mobile, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. However, uh, it guffaws at your movement and then dips down its front paw, strangely, kind of lowering its shoulder as it whips around to whip the tail at you and the egg. Uh, however... You can't have the egg if it's broken. Uh, sorry, it's a... Uh, no, it's attack. Sorry. Where'd you go? That is a 19 to hit. Hit. And... 19 points of bludgeoning damage. And you hear it thud into the side of the egg. Uh, it doesn't seem to have uh, broken through. Mm-hmm. But it does seem to have impact of the side. And you can see just the tiniest change in the color, not so much a crack, just so much as the, the color itself seems to swirl and twist a little bit. Uh, in your mind, however, especially right now, now you feel yourself in contact with it, and there's this steady thrumming feel of energy as you feel yourself and Riarden occupying the same space. And at first you're thinking, why is my heart beating so fast? And then you're thinking, it's not my heart. You are in tune with him at this moment. And he is shaken and scared. And an egg. And an egg. Uh, That was your turn. So, Zacchaeus. Firebolt on this guy. Okay. Six plus 11. 15 to hit. No, 17, yes. What's the sword of her? 17 to hit. 17 hits. Nineteen fire. Oof. Oof. Let's see down. Uh, okay. As you see the fire kind of explode in his face and it kind of shakes it off. But it's not dead. Uh, it is not dead. In which case I will run away. Yeah. Behind the snake. Okay. Uh, the dragon attempts once more to hit the egg. <coughs> You see, it seems to be much more determined. 22 to hit. Yep. Uh, For an additional 15 points of bludgeoning damage. The whole thing rocks and shakes. It seems to be staying firm in the pedestal that has been put in, Mm -hmm. but the swirling intensifies, and there is a a jitter of fear. When is the dragon's turn? Uh, It can act on the dragon's turn. I'd forgotten forgot that before, that. which was terrible. Uh, and the the uh, the drag uh, the egg once again spins and twists inside, um, and you hear the fear once more. Overhead, you hear the battle continue, and the speech between the two of them. You can kind of con- think of this as a continuous battle that's going on overhead. I'm just highlighting it when the round turns. Um, and the dragon is now taunting, and you can see it flying around and uh, and uh, giving chase now in between and up and around the the eagle. You can see the eagle's wings look uh, drooping, and there are many missing feathers. Uh, presumably, the fight has not necessarily been going so well so far. And given that his voice speaks, your fight is weak. Release the seed. Free the power trap within, and we will all benefit from Yggdrasil's glory. There's no response to that. <laughs> Clark, uh, make a history check. Okay. I don't have the skill. It's okay. Uh, three. Three? No. Okay. Something about the name Yggdrasil he's for heard a it. moment. He's, he's heard it. He's heard it before, yeah. but nothing particular. Is that the dragon that said that? Yes, yeah. it is. In Draconic? Nope, in common. Okay. Um, it's almost as though it wants everybody to understand what it's saying. Well, I'm assuming Zagus understands what it, mean, it means. Um, I have a player know the name of Grizzle. I know that. You uh-huh. make a history check. I don't, I don't, I'm trying to remember if I've mentioned it already or not. Yeah, because uh, the Wild Hunt took this, the branch from the library. Right, the branch yeah. of Grizzle. Yeah. yeah. We well, also read about it on the wall. Right. Yeah. Right. So the thing you're putting together right now is that if what it's referring to is the egg, 
Inside the egg is the seed of Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil, the world's tree. Yeah, so the dragon can't have that. No. <laughs> um, extraordinarily powerful artifact, potentially. Uh, Clark. Zacchaeus uh, is an attic. <laughs> given what Clark knows about magical plants, mm-hmm. which is very little. Very little, mm-hmm. other than the fact that these were tame a moment ago. Yeah. Uh, do they, they, do they look writhing. like they would entangle someone now, or just the people that are already there? Um, it looks like, and even right beside you, the grove is all starting to be, become active. Okay. It's extraordinarily active down there. Cool. Uh, in that case, Clark will uh, whip the glaive around and drive it into the ground, um, take his move action to uh, whip out his bow, and take advantage of characters that can't move over that way. <laughs> okay. They aren't, in, they aren't entangled yet. But okay. They are threatening to be entangled. All, right. and all it actually does is slows people down. That's yeah. all right. So that That's all that spell does, but the yep. things are doing more than that. He'll launch two arrows on two separate attacks. Okay. What, are you, what are you attacking? Which disadvantage. One? Oh, first guy. First guy, first attack. Oh, okay. In the line. Uh, with a bow. Why the disadvantage? Because oh, I'm yeah, you're tired. A, your eye. Well, I'm tired. Yeah. One. And then I'm also tired. Tired of, <laughs> doesn't affect attack <laughs> yet. That's, that's only that's like a, three that's a higher levels. level of. Um, um, it's just skill. But if you are using, you're, if you're using the off eye well, under guidance of the others. Yeah, well, that would be the same too, I yeah. guess. All right. Um, first shot is a 13. Uh, 13 is a miss. Okay, second shot. It actually, the one up front you see is actually carrying uh, two weapons. Okay. And it kind of just flinches and knocks the arrow aside. Second shot. Uh, 15. Second shot. Uh, 15 is uh, a miss. Okay. Uh, sorry, no, that's a hit. Okay. That one only has that natural arm. It's not wearing anything else. Two. Despite the mini. Six damage of the pointy type. Okay. This is assuming the arrows have lasted in the shadow for however long we've been here, and they're still intact. Because mm, if they aren't, then I'm throwing nothing at them. <laughs> uh, is there any particular reason they wouldn't be attacked? Yeah. Illusory arrows. Well, I'm saying like all of our equipment has been slowly degrading over oh, yeah, time, yeah. so it you won't be on able, how long. You won't be able to recover the arrow, yeah. but it okay. did still fly true. All right, so we got an arrow and a guy over there. That's good enough for me. Yep. And he kind of hits him, and he, and he hisses at you and kind of looks towards you. Sure. Okay. Um, Zacchaeus. You. You were kind of was dodging out. behind this this uh, yeah. this snake and watching that other one, but strangely, out of the corner of your eye, you see Radix stand up. <gasps> Those nat twenties are great, incredible. Hey. Uh, she's hiding in the bush already. She's just she's just kind of shaking her head and standing up. That's basically all she can do. Okay, that means that group over there. So the one that would that you just shot mm-hmm. surges forward at you. Cool. Uh, What's his movement? Thirty. Then he goes one. Hmm? Takes twenty feet to go one square. Oh, what? Okay. It's not just difficult terrain then? Nope. It's times four difficult. Oh wow. <laughs> Takes four four squares of movement to go one square. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he will then he will uh, run, basically trying to pull himself out of that. Okay, I'm just. I'm sorry, unfortunately, I wrote that in the middle of the thing. Is he at the threshold yet? Or he's not? Well, that's the thing. I put the line in the middle of the oh. rows, so it probably would have been here. So yeah, he'd be at the edge of it. So he's got more normal movement after this. Okay. Uh, does he run up to Clark? Uh, just what gets outside and kind of is throwing off the, the thick tendrils of, of growth behind him. Uh, the one behind him is going to do something similar. <coughs> move and run. Yep. That one is not moving. Okay. Uh, that one instead is going to cast a spell. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Hmm, that'd be weird. Uh, sure. Um, it uh, it uh, hisses in that strange language. 
which actually you would understand kind of the language that they're they're hissing in. It's it's accented heavily, but it is draconic. Cool. Uh, as a small ball of flame appears in its hand, oh. and it just simply throws it at the ground, clearing out a space in front of it. Uh, okay. The one behind it will move through. Uh, so it will get the four times the movement for the first one, and then be able to move into the next square, and then basically a okay, stop there. Okay, so it's there. cleared that square? Yeah. It's not the most effective of spells, but it's helpful. Uh, At least it thinks it four, is. Four, and then it can move there. It still has one square movement left, but it, that won't let it go anywhere. Is it going to run? Um, yeah, it's going to run as well. And is that one, one is, hmm. yeah. They're all going to be within glaive They're, they're all going to have to push through it, so they're all going to run in that direction. <coughs> the other one will try to go in the other direction. It's, yeah, it's still basically the same slowness, but it's going to try. Um, all right. Well, that really slowed those group down. Let's see. How about now uh, the dragon will take another whip at the egg in the cloud. That is a wrong screen. 22 to hit. It is battering away at this uh, for 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, the swirling color now is seeming to pool on the side that's been hit repeatedly uh, and you almost see the shape of the egg warp inward as if the impact is starting to, to disrupt it. Uh, you're hearing screams of pain from within. It can't withstand this forever. It can still take a bit, but it can't withstand this forever. Yep. Yeah, get right from there. There we go. Uh, that would be Kuzima's turn. Kuzima's turn. Okay, he's just moving. Uh, double movement, stealth. Seven. Okay. Done. Uh, Actually, can I see? Uh, should be able to see face. You can Clark see. Uh, yes, the it's you can only kind of see the upper part of him because the the trees in the way for your short okay. height, but you can see him. I know you don't like this, but you can do the thing, Clark. Have a uh, bard inspiration. Ooh, is that a D eight? Uh, yeah. What is it? You're level? I don't remember. Uh, D8, yeah. Okay. okay. Keep that aside then. Uh, let's see. Uh, now it is the dragon's turn. Mm. I thought yeah. it just went. Or, like, it did. smacked the egg. Uh, all right. It cheats. It can do that. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, as it kind of chuckles. It did not request it intact. And it breathes out a cone of acid. It knows that there's a lizard man in front of it. It doesn't seem to care. Um, make a dexterity saving throw. The egg cannot make a dexterity saving throw. Total 20? You like swirl the acid. Total the of egg, so 20. Swirl the They're going to get covered in acid now. Not the fun kind either. That would be a cool dragon. <laughs> it's like a second down dragon. Prismatic oh, dragon. All colors, man. It's like instead of prismatic spray, it's prismatic dragon. Just swirl the colors. Yeah. That needs to happen. Uh, so, the egg begins to dissolve and crack apart in pieces. Uh, you take 36, uh, 37 points of acid damage. Ouch. That's half. Uh, as the egg dissolves around you and you feel the energy being released, you look within and now you can see within the egg itself. Uh, there is a very large seed at the center of the egg. Uh, but you feel that connection 
withering. Chunks of this egg fall down to the ground and start to dim and gray. The voice, at least for the moment, is gone. The egg, or the, the seed held in the middle by this energy, just drops down to the ground. It's in me. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw and try to grab it. It's literally in me. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't actually hold things necessarily. Unless you grapple at them. It's like an air elemental organ now. Uh, that is a 15. 15? Yeah. It's kind of hovering there. You're basically using one form of the pseudopod to hold it. Right. I will say you don't have both hands to attack with necessarily, but I don't think you need both hands I don't for have your attacks. Hands. Uh, well, you have essentially pseudopods, that's what the slime represents. Um, otherwise, you couldn't really do anything. I, I can grapple stuff, it's part of the thing, but yeah. it's fine. As an attack, right? You can grapple things. No, it's... well, yes and no. But <laughs> we, we've already right. established that I can. Sure. Is what I'm saying. Uh, and you're holding on to it. Uh, however, that diminishing sense, that emptiness is filling you um, more than you might have expected it to. Uh, that is its turn. Let's see, the things are... Oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy? This guy is gone. <laughs> wrong place, wrong time. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's its work. Did he get acid barfed on? Oh, yeah, he just completely obliterated him. Basically, the only thing left were the legs that just sort of fall over <laughs> at that point. Uh, this one and this one. This one moves up and attempts to swing at you. Uh, 17? Meets. Meets? Okay. Do, 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 do. For five points of piercing damage. It's just basically uh, running through, and actually at this point it's slashing with its hands, I think. And the other one, the big one, uh, 16 does not hit, right? No. Okay. As it tries to stab in, the end of its its pike is a little wilted from where it got caught in the edge of it, so it has to kind of re-maneuver. Re uh, that's their go. Elzera, it is your turn. I am using my bonus action okay. to heal some. Ooh, that's a nice... That is three-eighths. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, you feel invigorated, perhaps, by the... Panic mode. Kind of. By the rage. Yeah. Uh, so, let me just put that 20. Nice done. Cool. Um, that was my bonus. I so I have two people that I'm in range of right now. Uh, it depends on what your range is, but yes, probably. Yeah. If you've got reach three, if you don't have reach, you've got two. No, no I have the, the dragon and the buddy who's been hitting me with the pole arm. Uh, there's a third guy right in there. He's actually right up to you. Okay. Because I had one that was throwing stuff at me, one that was hitting me with a ten foot range, and then. Yeah, the buddy who was throwing it, throwing you moved up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So, because I'm here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It should be right up next to you. So, this one, too? Yeah, that's with a 10 feet. So, okay. Cool. Um, and the dragon. So, yep. I'm going to... You know, the dragon. And the dragon. Uh, I'm going to attempt to hit the dragon. Okay. The dragon does not want to be hit. Cool. That is a 21. That dragon is going to get it. Uh, 8 plus 3 is 11 plus 2, so 13. Okay. Uh, and I am going to move 100 feet with this seed. Far away as I can. Okay. Uh, the dragon looks at you and then uh, can't move. I don't know how we would explain this necessarily, but kind of was pushed off balance by the, by the attack that you made. Yep. Unable to attack. The other two will get a swing at you, though. Yep. Uh, the one that is using claws gets a 19 to hit. Cool. For three points. And the pike guy loses the die. 17 to hit. Meets. Okay. For four points. So yeah, they're both kind of caught off guard. The, the swirling wind kind of changes everything for them. Where are you going? What's your normal movement? Because it'd be half if you're hauling something. 
I'm a large creature holding a seed now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's like, it's like equipment at this point. It's okay. not gonna. It's not gonna affect. It is. A, it is a large seed. It's bigger than a person's head, but it's it's for yeah, the strength that, that you big. have, not that big. Yeah. Uh, I am going to move. I'm gonna make a ballsy move and go into the forest. Okay. And I'm gonna go in here. <laughs> All right. Somewhere here. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw as you attempt to move through the now activated wall of, of uh, vines. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a ten. That's a ten. Okay, you are caught in it. Uh, you can't be restrained, but you I, do get scratched. Yeah. Um, for uh, math. So, Curse that math. Sixteen. Piercing damage. Just regular piercing damage, though. As basically you're trying to push your way through, and because of the bulk of this thing, you can't do what you would normally do, which is just squeeze yourself around it. Yeah. So Plus it makes, I have it a little, shield. makes it a little bit awkward. Oh yeah, there's the shield too. Actually, the shield is having a really hard time making it through. Yeah, um, it's actually dragging behind you a little bit. Um, if you do want to take the shield through this dense forest, mm-hmm. you will have to move at half speed because it can't keep up. Yep. Uh, I I will move as far as I can this round, and the the goal is to make it so that it's harder for the dragon to get to me in the seed. Okay. As you move out of the grove, one thing that everybody instantly notices, there was a sense a moment ago that something happened. It was as though all of the air gets sucked out of the area for a moment. And then, immediately after you start to move away, everybody notices that the green grass is now wilted and browned and getting dry. The bodies of the druids who had been here, who had already started to desiccate, blow away as if a wind has blown them. The grove vanishes, replaced now with a tangle of thorns and trees, and it is the furniture is nothing more than a few stones. What you realize, none of this existed, except for what the egg had created. But now that it is gone, it is all wiped away. The uh, the spiral is still essentially a spiral, but now it is wild in all directions and let loose. You take off into the into the trees. Uh, that was Elzara's turn. Zakis, you hear the screech of the uh, dragon uh, from over there as it sees what it was after disappearing. Okay. Did the snake go? Nope. Okay. As you take a look at it, make an inside check. Twelve. Is that a disadvantage? Uh, yes. Because you're exhausted. I want to Twelve plus five. Seventeen. Okay. You're not just gonna stay there. You're gonna. Um, as you. So you roll with disadvantage. You get higher than the twelve. No, I I got twelve, but like I have I have plus five inside. Oh, okay. All right. I had, uh, I had a 12 and a 19. <laughs> ah, thank you. I was confused for a moment there. Uh, as you uh, sort of look at the the, uh, the snake, you see its head sort of turning back at you, and it does not have a friendly look in its face. It appears to no longer be working on your side. At least that's the impression you get. After that roar had rolled over it, something changed in it. Well, I'll firebolt this guy. Okay. Because he's... 14. 14 is a miss, unfortunately. Kind of shoulders it and gets a thick piece of scale turned towards it. Yeah, I don't like the look at that snake, but I'll just... Okay, as you move away, it lances out. Uh, that is a thir- uh, 23 to hit. Yeah. For six points of poison... or Sorry, six points of piercing damage. One point of poison damage and make a constitution saving throw. You are poisoned. As you can feel the the venom pulsing through your veins, it had to have done something different because you know when it bit Elzera, there wasn't that particular response. Mm-hmm. But it seems to have something you can you can withhold or use at will. I'll ask. It seems to will, and Heather with you. It seems to uh, uh, be um, reacting differently. You also can feel the sort of icy pull through your veins. 
this is not going to wear off. This is going to get worse. Awesome. Uh, that's your turn. Up above you, once more. Um, you hear the dragon once again taunting. Uh, it will change part way through as it comes to realize the sensation of what it knew to be here moves upward in an envelope. But for the moment, it's still taunting. Even now, they move against you. If you thought your alliance with Arvax remained, you are a fool. No. Where has it gone? And there's an oof from the dragon as in its distraction it is hit square on by the sunbeam once more which is kind of illuminating the area overhead of you uh, and you hear it howl with pain Clark uh, well we see people are getting free of the bushes at this point they're trying to so he'll also one has so he'll drop the bow and arrow okay pick up the glaive and advance to attack okay that's, that's the idea <coughs> Go for it. Yeah, well, uh, first two strikes. See if there's a third. Uh, 25 on both. <laughs> yeah, that's with uh, this advantage because you're using the other eye? No, he's he's done with that. Okay. He's just like, eh. uh, yeah, that hits twice. Okay, way. cool. Uh, D10s. One moment, please. It's just on the first dude. Uh, uh, 12 and 13. 12 and 13. 20, 25. Okay. Uh, slashing damage. All right. I think it might be magical, maybe. Question. <laughs> uh, it is actually magical. To do math. Okay, there we go. Broke through the brain freeze. Does he drop? He does not. Okay. In fact, uh, you see quite kind of foam forming around his mouth, uh, and there's a, a thin tongue which sort of uh, reaches out and licks one of the wounds. All right. Um, uh, action surge. Okay. In that case. Um, try so it again. Draw from deep within you to fight once more. Yeah. You can feel the orc blood running through you. You will not give up today. This is a thing? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can geez. do it after you roll. Okay. Yep. Uh, well, first and yours is just on rolls, right? Not on damage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Seven. Five's going to miss, so 14 to hit. 14 misses. Okay. And then... Ugh. Eight and nine. 17. 17 hits. Okay, that'll be a hit then. That's good. Lizard guy will take another... Uh, six damage of the slashing magical types. All right. He does indeed take that right. as you slide through and you can see the shadow of the glaive flowing through him. He seems somewhat taken aback a little bit by the weapon, but not the fight. Okay. Uh, let's see. That was Clark. Ah, Radix. Um, Radix will da uh, move into the tree beside her. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh, over. Uh, keels over. It's wrecking the place. And from within there, uh, three darts once more fly out towards that one that's standing there. Uh, and two of them strike strike home. And what color is he? Red, white, white. Yep. Okay. Uh, probably not the best one for her to attack, but. Is that? Behind. Uh, the, the darts strike it uh, suddenly in the back and it seems confused as to where they came from. It remains, She remains hidden. Um, <laughs> those guys. Well, the one facing off against you is going to definitely attack. Uh, Who's the you? That's against Clark. Okay. You're the only one that actually is within range of any of the fights right now. Yep. Uh, but seems thrown off its attack as I roll really badly okay. uh, as it tries to sort of advance and swing at you. Actually, using, in this case, claws. Um, 
but just does not seem to be able to connect. Uh, a little bit of blood that has gone across its forehead seems to have seeped into one of its eyes and it's blinking back. Mm-hmm. They bleed, that's good. Uh, the others will push through, but now the ground has become very dangerous. Uh, they both made that. As you see them emerging out of now what is almost like the the uh, the spiral grove itself, uh, it is so thick and dense there, almost as though they are walking through the wall of this, but managing to kind of move and and move in very in, uh, non-human ways to avoid the now active vines which are trying to grasp at them. But they do manage to move forward without getting hit. So again, they're okay. kind of pushing and running through, so the spending their time. Does it go here or there? Straight forward. Okay. And the other one will try to go to the other side? Uh, well, there's no other side. Oh, okay. It's just... Uh, actually, there's full movement. And then run? Can it get out? Full movement. Uh, yeah, just, if it runs, a, it can get to there. There's okay. a space out of the corner, yep. too. The, uh, the red-robed one once again casts down and burns another square, uh, kind of carving a path a little bit. So five more feet on from so where that was. I think that had moved once to get there, so it could move up to there now. Uh, one movement uh, can run. So yep. Let's do uh, 25, 30. 30. Uh, 15, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, on the outside one. Okay. Because uh, it can cross over what that tree is. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, and now sees uh, Zakis who's been kind of running towards oh. this pile of trees. Wait a minute, sorry, still. I forget that entire thing. It just goes there. Oh yeah, yeah. That whole thing there. is still covered. Yeah. All right. In front of you, Zakis, you do see this thick wall of vines and trees, almost impassable. Okay. Uh, that's them, uh, Kujima. Hmm. You can hear and more or less pretty much see at this point that there is a lot of these large. They kind of resemble large cobalts, but a little bit more, um, more leathery, thick skin, bearing down on your friend. Well, um, uh, well, move one, and then from there, I'm going to hit that. Okay. With a dagger, taking a minus five for extra damage. Quite right away. Okay. Oh, forgot I have advantage two, which is good because that was a five. Okay, that's a twenty-one to hit. Oh yeah, that definitely hits. Uh, ten plus twelve. Oh yeah, from throwing a plus two. Good. Um, so that's. 18 damage. Oof. That's a nasty hit. Uh, what was that, a dagger you threw? Uh-huh. Yeah. You see it kind of sink deep into its chest, and it howls in pain. Blood starts pooling around the blade where it was, where it landed. Um, hmm. Uh, does Clegg look injured? Not as of yet. Okay. Uh... In that case, hmm. can't really do much else. Uh, eh. You can really do this. I'll give you my other one. <laughs> I know you can. And then I'll just move back here. Okay. Ain't anything uh, else we can take do. the egg off the field, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm just leaving it there for the simple fact that it keeps track of where I am in the woods. Okay, all right. Because I know how far I am in the woods based on that point. Okay, if that helps you, then I'm all for it. Uh, let's see, it is the dragon's turn. Uh, the dragon kind of howls with anger to see, its, to see what it had within its grasp 
now vanishing into the woods and will fly off and crash into the woods as well. Uh, attempting to there. not get caught up in it, which that was pretty darn close, but you see it kind of ripping through behind you. It is moving slowly. It's not able to just move through like you were, uh, but it's also not getting caught up or, st or stymied by the uh, the vines. So it's <coughs> right off of the board. That'll turn into a chase, essentially, between you and it. Uh, that is its turn. The ones that are left behind uh, don't really have any idea what's going on. Oh, well, they can kind of see what's going on. So they'll move in that direction. So they each move 30. If that puts them at the tree, that's difficult terrain. Uh, 30 is on the tree. Okay. And then the scout would be right behind him. All right. And you can hear them running up behind now on the other side as the dragon flies overhead of you, ignoring you entirely. The ones that are in front of you see their uh, squad leader, for effective term, uh, kind of disappearing into the tree, and they look confused as to what's happening next. Uh, that is that one, and that one, and this guy. This guy's going to be going over to the trees and just basically taking his, his hammer and just swinging wildly at the trees to see if he can hit where he thought something was. It just seems to hit tree. It just seems to hit bush. Alzara. Well, I'm going to move another 100 feet by using the dash. dash okay. Uh, dexterity saving throw, though, again, because you are still moving through this density. And you can feel it now kind of grasping at you with purpose. You even can look around, and you can see that while it has started to spread out from where the grove was, it is almost as though there's a jet spike of it following you. The entire forest now is focused on you. Yep. Uh, that is an 11. An 11. Uh, you find yourself at, at uh, basically, this is difficult terrain. Yeah. So. That's what I was treating it as. Okay. Uh, well, so because I was going to move 100 feet, but if, if I dash, I'd have to. Okay, gotcha. Uh, you do take uh, four <coughs> points of piercing damage, so not very much for you. Uh, and you do notice that the vines also are kind of dipping in and trying to grasp at the seed itself. Uh, but your winds are keeping it at bay for the moment. But that was really close right now. Um, cool, good to know. Um, I am also going to use another third level spell. Er, um, okay. I use a second level spell. Uh, so another eleven points to me. Okay. How far away are you now? Uh, I am one hundred and sixty feet away from this die. Okay. Uh, that's that turn. That's that. Uh, Zakis. And then we should break. Okay. We'll take a break after this. There's a shift here anyway from the original version of the combat to something else. I'll cast Fly again. Is this thing still 15 feet or is it like collapsing a little bit? Uh, it's actually, if anything, higher because it's becoming unraveled. Imagine it kind of like it was a tightly uh, combed head of hair and now it's been gone through the tilt a whirl a few times. So it certainly gets scraggly little things off. And you can kind of see these tendrils growing almost prehensilely out of it. Okay. In fact, uh, make a dexterity saving throw because you're standing next to it. Fifteen. Fifteen. You narrowly uh, escape being grasped up by the the uh, hedge itself as it sort of surges forward. Okay. So I'll go high enough to avoid it. Okay. So that's like twenty feet. Yeah. And just go as far For as now. You can see the hole where the dragon had crashed through is starting to be filled up in the woods. Okay. I'll keep going. How far can I go if I go 20 feet up? What's your move? What's your fly? Uh, Speed? 60. 60. So 40 more feet. Mm. You see now this entire half area has been plugged full of the uh, of the uh, the trees and vines. You can see the uh, the one place that hasn't quite been covered there in the center is where the throne of stone was. So I'm I'm there, but like in the air. Okay. Hopefully out of range of. Right. And I think we're going to take a quick break, rearrange ourselves, and come back for the chase half of the scene. So we will return shortly. <coughs> if we can ever get away, it's the button that's not working. So we'll get a little herky jerky with the video, too. <sighs> Technology! <laughs>
Is the dice going to work? I have no idea if the dice will work, but I believe we're back in, in order. And I had to make a save or yeah, something? Yeah, I apologize, folks, for who were trying to watch this at home. I can see it's jumping quite a bit there, so we will try to... Uh, <laughs> I guess I will try to do some technological uh, foo for ah and see if I can get it working. Everybody wants a robot now. Uh, but... We return back to this battle in which already some things have been lost. Uh, the uh, the dragon that was here, the, lo the smaller of the one of the brood of Givanetta, having melted the egg, releasing within the seed, which is now being carried by Elzera. Um, let's see. <laughs> Well, some of the comments that given that it was going to make have definitely changed, uh, as they were going to be continued to taunt and therefore distract um, Zora. But both of them now realize Zora lets out a uh, gasp of of shock and surprise as when she looks down to what had been the grove that she had created, getting devoured and transformed and basically reduced to nothing more than the wild. Uh, terrifying putrid forest festering once more has taken control of this space and is no longer a sacred grove furthermore she is distracted and at that point Givanetta strikes um, the bird disappears as the strike and bite do, do uh, dig deeply into her form and it shatters and falls away, revealing the elf once more. However, the elf being in that close proximity with that particular staff strikes and a loud... Let me see what exactly is that. Uh, it would sound like a large crackling uh, as the, uh, the top of the staff where the tree growth had been there kind of looks and turns like it folds into a skeletal hand, grasping onto the wing of Givanetta, and uh, dark energy pulses out from it and over its wings. Uh, it lets out a howl, releasing her, and then seems to be spinning somewhat, trying to recapture itself, smashing off into the distance. Clark, all, all right. this is happening overhead. Yeah. Love but that. you may have further concerns in front it's of true. you first. Clark would like to strike at the uh, <coughs> fellow with the two weapons there, the, the three D mini. Okay. Uh, that's the first strike. We attempt to do that. Uh, he'll also take five off the attack to do extra damage. Okay. Kacha. Uh, so fourteen. Probably a miss. Fourteen is a miss, unfortunately. Okay. Try that again. As it sort of moves and undulates, its spine able to curve farther than yours, and you miscalculate. Same deal, and much less. So two misses. All right. Despite the heavy weapon's uh, promise, uh, only thing that touches the enemy is the edge of the shadow, which uh, it does recoil from, but does not get hurt from. Part of the move, he'll uh, choke the weapon closer so it can attack in closer range, okay. so as not to overextend himself. Okay. That's it. Uh, Radix, still hidden, will attempt once again. For her, this may be survival. Uh, that is a hit. Woo! The first one. A hit on the second one. And the guy was already and looking pretty rough, too. the third one. As she fires out of the... What color is he? I'm not sure what color. He is red, red, red white. white, white. Red, white, white? Yep. Oh. As these spikes come out, hitting it in three different places, one in the leg, one in the shoulder, one right square in the forehead, uh, it howls in pain, uh, but does not go down. And she will attempt once more to stay hidden. Um, let's see. Those guys. So the one in ones in front of you, Clark, yep. are going to attempt to take their their swings. Sure. Um, wow. 
I don't think an 11 hits, and that was the highest of the two. Uh, you just barely missed. Okay. The other one will attempt to rake its claws across you. That seems a bit better. 17? Yep, that'll definitely hit. Okay. As its claws do 8 points of slashing damage. Okay. Uh, the one in behind actually has reach with that weapon and will attempt to strike as well over the shoulders. Oh, that's cocked at a 20. That's so mean. Uh, however, that is a 19 to hit. Oh, that'll definitely hit. As it kind of... They seem to know each other well and you get the sense they fought as a team and often fight together in close quarters. Uh, you take 13 points okay. of piercing damage as it basically stabs over or through or around the other ones. The one that's right at the edge tries to move out and still kind of pushing and running uh, and manages to push through without getting caught. So straight ahead or over here? Um, over to, yeah, over there. Over here? Okay. Yeah. Um, the, if you got uh, range, you could probably take a swing. Uh, it does have 10 foot range okay. if it's got it there. Uh, no, because I had to double move to get out. Okay. Uh, the shaman now, uh, once more, will step into the places it's burnt, noticing that they are starting to revive a little bit, but they're free, and will once again take a third shot, basically at its feet, in order to uh, clear a pathway. Mm, dig out the sharpie there again? Yeah. You want to just note the third spot? Sure. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Does it want to progress into that space? Uh, Probably has enough. No, room. actually, okay. uh, it wants to. She wants. It wants to retreat back to the other cleared space. Oh, all right. Um, it has made a pathway out. Now it's going to make a pathway, or made a pathway in. Now it looks like it's going to make a pathway out. Right. Uh, and the one over there proceeds to move through, <coughs> and I think it basically makes two squares. The one over by the tree. Um, that's about as far as it gets. Uh, and the snake. <coughs> The snake will come circling around this side, so it moves 30. I'm going to just move it around. And at this point... Oh, yeah, no, it's deep in. Uh, Kuzaima. Mm -hmm. It's your turn. Mm. I'll move over to the <coughs> opening. Mm. There's a pile of them there. It's mm -hmm. very densely I'll packed. A dagger at the last one I attacked. That's the uh, 3D mini. Okay. Uh, 13, 25. 25 definitely hits. 16. Okay. Uh, the dagger once again sinks in pretty badly. Uh, yeah, it's, then looking, I, it's looking pretty rough at this point. Then I move two back. That's all I got. Okay. You would have seen new opponents on the other side of that tree, probably. Yeah, they're piling up there. Mm. Uh, it is their turn, so they are proceeding uh, over the edge or over the tree. Okay. Uh, actually, they will dip into the inside. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not those. hidden. Yeah, I don't have an action of stealth. So. Um, and the one in back can't reach, but the other one can definitely reach. Take a swing at Kujima for a 11. Yeah, that's not a hit. Uh, that's their turn. Crashing through the trees. Trying to catch up to you. Uh, manages to not get caught up. But I don't think it's speed. You're flying it, or you're. I have a speed of 100. Yeah. It doesn't quite have the same speed, but it does get within range. As you hear it uh, growling behind you, mm -hmm. and once again, there is an intake of breath. So you'll need a dexterity saving throw, as once again, it breathes out towards you. That is cocked. Mm. No. No? What was your total? Two on the dice. Oh, two. Yeah, that's not that's so good. Um, how how close did it get? Cause like I'm sixty feet. Okay, cause I'm already like a hundred and sixty into mm -hmm. the forest. But it has a flight speed of eighty. Yes, through difficult terrain. 
mm-hmm. they can't do what I can do. Oh, uh, you're right. Actually, it wouldn't be caught up to you yet. Yeah. It, it, it has to dash this round, and then it's caught up to range, but it can't actually do the attack. Yeah. Okay. Because you said it was difficult during yep. the round. No, you're right. You're right. And it's still kind of thick around it. It does not have an ally of the forest itself. Uh, you're right. That's awfully close. It's close enough to get to you, but not actually able to breathe to you yet. Uh, all right. That would be their turn, that turn, and it is Elzara's turn. So right now, how far is it from me? Uh, right now it's 60 feet from you. It is 60 feet from me, okay. So I will move another 100 away. Okay. And, er, 100 is to keep my shield close to me. It will continue to try to get to me. It just won't be able to keep up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to move full 200. Okay. Yep, the, sh- the shield is caught up in, in the uh, branches and will keep moving or trying to. It can't move through solid walls, though, and you can see this is starting to get thick and thick behind you. Yeah. So one of those one, uh, isn't one of those ones after, like, 30 feet away, it just drops? Nope. Uh, however, if it's caught there and doesn't, she doesn't come back within an hour, it's, it's disconnected. Yeah. So it is effectively stuck at this particular point, though. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. You hear from within you the faintest of voices. Let me go. When you can chew on that for a moment or two. Zakis. Well, things look like they're getting pretty bad in that corner. Definitely. Yeah, so I'll go up just high enough so I can see the entire battlefield? Uh, from there, you probably have to go up another 15 feet. Okay, because the, the the walls themselves are 15 feet, and they're right close into what's kind of covering over them. So you fly up another, you're now like 30 feet up, I think. 35, yeah. Okay. And I will cast Scatter. Clark, trust me. Uh, Clark. Never We're a good thing to hear. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a save. Clark will go here. Kuzana will go here. So, what does the form of the spell look like to you? Hmm? How do you describe this spell? What does it look like? The air starts rippling around five specific creatures, which would be Clark, Kuzima. Its range is only 30 feet. What? I thought it was 150. Or 120. The spell's range is only 30 feet, but you can then uh, move them up to 120 feet away. It doesn't say that. Okay, um. So I went up 15. Mm-hmm. I'll go as far as I can that way. Uh, well, what's your fly speed? 60? Yeah. Yeah, so you should be able easily to get over the area. That's so another 35 feet, or 45 feet. Yeah. So that's that's less than 45. So you basically have to be right over them to do it. Oh. Then I'll be dead. Because it's 30 feet. You're 30 feet up. So the range is only 30 feet. You literally have to be above them to do it. Yeah, then I'm boned. Okay. You could drop down a little bit. You're fine. We're boned. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all boned. Can I just not cast that and cast something else? You, you can. I'm just saying that you have to be you have to be a little closer maybe than to do it. Um, but you could drop down a little bit so you're not as high up. We'd still have to be fairly close to them. Scatter is a great spell when basically you're pretty much surrounded, so you go, everybody out of here. Mm-hmm. But that, does that include me, though? Uh, no, not necessarily. Yeah, that, that's the, you you can you could choose yourself, yourself to be oh. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it didn't up say to that five either. creatures of your choice that you can see within range. Technically, you can see yourself. Right. It doesn't say anything. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it all I'll go pretty much right above them. Okay. I, don't, I won't bother moving myself because I'm probably going like, to sure. take five bludgeoning damage from the mini falling. So I'll go right above them. Mm-hmm. I will not penalize you if your mini falls over. So me, Kuzima, and Clark will go over here. Uh, okay. Well, we wouldn't be able to go there because once you're way over there, you can't see this. Yeah, well, but we could, could, we could go a space you can see. Over here? Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, and these two will go back there somewhere. Okay, well, you get to choose where it is. Mm-hmm. The two of them get to make a saving throw. Yeah, DC 19, I believe. I don't think that's going to be very successful, but we will try it. Uh, da, 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 da. I just move the minis. It's a, it's a wisdom. Okay, well, uh, no on that one, and no on that one. So yeah, another one saved. 
None of them save, you said? Well, there's only the two of them that you're moving, right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, us three will go here -ish. What's the DC? You're unwilling? No. 19. Uh, I can't beat that, so I'll get moved. You could roll a 20. You could. I rolled a 17. Okay. okay. Yeah, as you feel yourself being drawn away from the battle. No. Oh. You had them exactly where you wanted them, and then... It's lined up like chaff. Ready to be mm. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> All right. That, now once the, again, now the vines the can field. just, like, eat them. Because <laughs> things were closing in, and by the time That's everybody, true. like, makes their way out, then they'll be eaten by the forest. Overhead, the shadow of Gvanetta moves off. You're not sure where from the ground. Uh, you're aware, however, that the shadow is growing closer. Uh, Did I have to make a save for something, like poison? Yes, actually, you do have to make a save. Eight, or ten, with my okay. con bonus. You feel your limbs starting to stiffen. Oh, that's not good. Uh, let's see, I have to look up a thing. Is the P where did they go? All right, so um, way up above, uh, there is the frustrated sound of uh, Zora as she is seeming to go in the same direction. You also hear uh, given it a cry out, and crashes from other areas are coming. You remember the flight was five dragons as well as Gavanetta, and they seem to be converging, but not they're quite a ways away at this point. However, they're not coming from this area, which is polluted with these vines. Uh, it yep. may not be good for you in a moment. Yep. Um, which is probably the the mildest thing I could have ever said. Let's see, what is their speed? Okay, about the same. All right. Uh, background to the top, Clark. Uh, does this place look familiar? Have I been here before? Yes, you find yourself suddenly out where you had had the feast before, although all of the benches are worn away to nothing but stone. They okay. were stone and wood before, but they don't even look like benches anymore. Uh, there are no bodies but churned up on earth and, and melted things. You see where the um, egg had been, there is now sort of a circle on the ground of a sort of semi uh, translucent green <coughs> where the egg had been. Who's that over there? Uh, there's one of them that seems to be beating the bushes. One of the lizard men is is beating. That's up a the lizard person over there. Yes. Oh, okay. That's all. You, that's all you see from here. Oh heck! I totally didn't know this. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think we've just. Oh, is there a guy? The, no. Is there a guy on the side? Yeah, yeah I just moved to the side. It's Sorry. like the candle was blocking Forget the him. entire oh. time. <laughs> he's absorbed into bushes. He, he's he's uh, he got hit by one of the trees falling. Did over he look before. like a lizard or an elf? Uh, lizard. Okay. Yeah. Uh. I, I think he just blended in with the... Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it, I, I thought I was like going through my list going, I don't remember that guy, but he must have moved. He Cl hides. Clark he will turn to his <laughs> companions and say, what now? The I snake is no longer our ally. It bit me and it And you can see the snake weird. on the other side, which okay. is sort of intently Clark moving around. Clark will run that way. Okay. It's poisonous. Don't forget, you can do the thing. 25. <laughs> 30. Thing. I'm assuming the table will cost a bit of movement. Not really. It's not really a table at this point. Either. I can get to there with a run, so that's a be okay. that'll be what I do. Make an insight check. Sure. Uh, insight is terrible. Seventeen. Uh, you are still exhausted. I to keep pointing it out. Apologies. Uh, insight is terrible. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. It's still enough that this close up to the snake, you can see it. Uh, kind of looking around, and it looks confused. Cool. Um, it's looking over where the egg was. It looks up at you with a confusion. Looks back to where it's been. Um, I'm not sure why it's confused, but it's definitely confused. Alright. Uh, that was Clark. Ah, oh, yes. Once again, hidden in the, in the uh, shadows. Oh, that was terrible miss. <coughs> that was a worse miss. Wow. Uh, three darts go flying out, but they're on the wrong side of the tree. Apparently, Radix got turned around uh, inside there and manages to... Oh, yeah. But there's no side of her. Just these strange darts flying outward. 
Uh, let's see. And that one will again beat the bushes. Yeah, this is a standstill for the two of them. This is terrible. Wow. Yeah, no. Just the, the, these bushes are taking a thwacking and it's just kind of carving into them, but they're also regrowing at a certain rate. Stop beating um, around the bush. <laughs> And in fact, it goes to pull back its hammer, and the hammer itself is kind of caught up in the vines. It's kind of being held by them now. Did it roll one? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, its, on its save, basically. Um, let's see, those guys are way the hell over there. Uh, yeah, they're going to be taking different orders in a moment. Uh, Kuzaima. Hmm... Oh, I'll spit a dart at the snake. Okay. Uh, one of the poison darts. All right. Minus five to hit. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen is a hit. 19 damage plus <coughs> whatever the poison does. Okay. Um, which poison is this? The poison I bought several bottles of. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, roll a d6. Three points. Okay. Uh, you see it hiss in confusion when it gets hit by your, your dart. No! Please. Um, let's see, crashing through the trees. Yeah. You see the larger dragon get hauled up by these vines, and it is now bound up within them, unable to make any further progress. Overhead, though, you see the darker shadow, free from those vines, trying to converge. Um, doesn't seem like it's spotted you yet. Cool. Um, Elzer, it is your turn because you guys can't really see what those guys are doing. Actually, you can kind of make up what they're doing, which is they're turning and going the other direction. So, I've been going straight this entire time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start going at an angle. Okay, I'm what going, kind of an angle? This is my path from... Okay. Is that a, a, a horizontal angle or a vertical so, angle? Uh, horizontal. Okay. Uh, so I'm going this way. I'm going to take it going at an angle this way. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go 100 feet and I'm going to take the hide action. Okay. Uh, you will need a dexterity saving throw again, though. From Dex those. save is a 12. 12 is not enough. Yep. So you are grappled. Uh, I cannot be grappled. It effectively, it's nothing for you then. Uh, five points of piercing damage, which gets reduced as well from your form. Uh, oh, actually, the seed is grappled. Fair enough. Um, hmm. I will then, instead of hiding, I... Sorry. Math. There we go. That is there. Uh, I'll do a... It's a strength check to ungrapple it. To get rid of a grapple, yep. Uh, I will try to ungrapple it. Okay. Uh, that's a 12. 12? Unfortunately, it's holding fast. It, um, you look over and a little bit of horror see that some of the the uh, spiked thorns have dug into the sides of this seed. While it had been protected, mm -hmm. the seed itself seems to have the normal flesh of a seed. And they've kind of dug in. You can almost see them pulsing a little bit. That is what I do for now. Okay. Zakis. So I have gotten that far. Uh, well, you were grappled, so I'm going to say you made it half the distance. So I, I would have heard the snake say, wait, when you got shot with a dart, right? Uh, yeah. Because okay. it protests it. pretty loudly. Wait for what? Are you our ally or not? I was confused. 
the voice took my mind. We're What's... trying to recover the seed. Where is it? That's all you're going to get for this turn. Uh, background overhead. <laughs> you hear the roar of, of given at overhead, and you realize that it's crashing into those vines. It seems as though it's going to be caught by the vines and then simply shrugs them off with sheer force of will. Um, you've seen... Uh, it, it is very difficult to do that. You feel like it, it reached down deep with desperation at this point to get it. Did I have to save again? Um, thank you, yes. I'm like stealing my own doom. But you Honestly, is the best part. 16 plus 18. 18. Um, you find your limbs starting to stiffen, and you find that you know, you're starting to make that motion of getting ready for casting, and you're having a difficulty time moving it, and you kind of just grip your muscles tight and force them through. Uh, your heart starts racing a little bit more, but you feel that, that effect uh, vanishing. You have overcome that, so you are still poisoned, but that, that lingering effect is no longer there. Okay. So I'm just okay. Um, <coughs> it calls out to you. Do not destroy the seed. It is the doom of others, but the hope for me. Who says it? The dragon. The dragon. If you destroy it, all will be destroyed. And this, can make I make an, an insight check? You can make an insight check on that. At disadvantage. No, because uh, I'm an elemental right now. Yep. They are immune to uh, you're still exhausted though, right? They are immune to exhaustion. We had uh, oh, right, established. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, I'd still it. be exhausted if I were to turn back into my form. Right, right. But. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, definitely there's a huge amount of anger. Uh, I'll give you the, the emotional response, and then you can ask me what you were looking for otherwise. Uh, but there's also desperation, uh, fear. Uh, is she telling the truth is basically what I'm... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like it was blurted <coughs> out rather than actually meant to be said. Um, you could say existential fear at this point. Uh, the danger of it falling uh, or being destroyed is more powerful than its instinct to survive. Hmm. So, uh, that was its turn. Uh, from behind it, Actually, where is that fun little spell? Um, filthy unnatural beast, I will send you to the nether region. That sounds terrible. Uh, around it, it hasn't gotten close enough to you yet, but around it, uh, you see a burst of light appear as you do hear um, the voice of Zora uh, casting the spell. Um, the bright light is a 60 foot radius now of sunlight. Um, it chooses to possibly succeed. Uh, oh, yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, as the brightness uh, envelops that area, the entire area is illuminated as though the sun has just risen. And you look up and are almost blinded by the effect of a small sun up in the trees. Um, there is a howl from uh, Givenetta, however, who yeah, seems to be at the center of the thing. Off in the distance, kind of slightly shadowed, you can actually see the humanoid form now of uh, Zora. Uh, she does not look <coughs> um, It looks as though this might have been the last effort from her. Uh, now, Clark. Yeah, I race forward and kill the snake. No! Okay. Yeah. Make an attack. As he approaches, he will say, apologies, but we need your strength. All right. Ciao. 
First one's likely a miss. What is it? <coughs> Math is 13. It's a hit. 13 is a hit? 13 is a hit. Oh, well, then they both Tis a beastie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. He's not built for combat. He has other purposes. In well, it turns out I'm right. that can help us. <laughs> well, he'll help him, sure. So 9 and 14 is 23. Okay. You take a large chunk out of it. Uh, and something I had forgotten before was all the necrotic damage I should be doing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so another four necrotic on top of that. All right. Uh, as the chunk comes out, you there's this flash of shadow that seems to sear the wound and almost drag it open a little bit more. It writhes in agony. It's still alive, but it took a large part out of it. Okay. That's okay. it. Um, let's give it one more try here. She might make it. There we go, that's a hit. <coughs> and that's a hit, barely. And that's a miss. So once again, from within the... Holy crap. Is he actually dead? Again, what color is that guy? Uh, red, white, white. As he is bound up by the vines, she seems to take out the opportunity to... Uh, to make her strikes more precise. The third one still misses, but the first two are, are enough as one goes into the side of his neck and the other one right beside it making a big gashing wound and he bleeds out immediately. Grabbed up by the vines and hauled into the trees. There's a terrible shredding sound as the trees take their, or as the vines take their prize. Uh, and she's going to stay hidden if possible. Yes. Uh, let's see, who do I have left? Yeah, over on that side, they are basically retreating. Uh, the the one of the robes is making more paths as much as possible, so another square opens up on the other side, and the others are retreating. We probably won't see them by this point. Uh, once they've rounded that corner, you will not. Mm. Uh, we, we can't see them now anyway, can we? You guys can't. There's tall, 15 foot tall. So just, just move them another uh, three squares over, basically, as they are moving in a, in a bunch, mm. trying to get the hell away. <laughs> um, you see them struggling with the, the vines, though, as they are actually being slowly consumed by them. Uh, Kuzaima. Hmm. Hmm. I'll finish off the snake. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Ranged or hand to hand? Ranged. How far do you? How close do you want to be? I don't have to move. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, it's eleven twenty-three. Twenty-three is a hit. Eighteen damage. Yeah. The uh, what is it again? It's a uh, just a dart. Dart. Yeah. The dart kind of goes in as it's it's, as it's dark. as it's uh, opens its mouth and the dart goes in and up into its brain. Uh, the creature writhes, falls over, and then turns to shadow. Shit. There are more escaping on this side. What should we do? Uh, Let them. We're more concerned about the seed. Where did Elzara go? What seed? Inside the egg. What egg? Exactly. We've been in a maze for the last minute. We have no idea what's going on. There was a you large can egg. You see where the where the egg was. Mm. The small yeah, it looks like there's a melted shell there. Um, I guess we failed to protect it. Elzara could still be alive, Angie. <laughs> Elzara could be where still be alive. Uh, I heard crashing noises that way. Do we still see the path? Oh uh, no, no, it's no. We don't see over. a path from her. We just see the path from the dragon. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, speaking of Elzara, hello. You're being bound up by this. The vines are slowly starting to consume the seed. I am going to... You could leave it behind. You're not restricted by it. Even as you look at it, you can see that it's graying a little bit. I heard Riardon's voice say to leave it behind. Nope. No. He said, let me go. Let me go. OK. 
can I make make a retroactive <coughs> check on that? Sure. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. It didn't. It, it, at first, the words hit you as personal, but in your in your kind of reflection now, um, you think of it as more of you were flying with the seed. If you'd let go at that point, it would have hit the ground. I am going to drop my farm. Okay. Cast freedom of movement on me and the seed. Okay. The seed doesn't. If it can animate. be grappled, it's not animate though. Yeah. Um, if it can be grappled while it's being pulled in a thing that's grappling it. All right. Oh, <laughs> it's weird, but I'll allow it. Um, the, uh, but in order to be pulled out of out of grapple, it moves five feet. But it can't move. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have movement. It's not it's animate. Own. Yeah, but it can no longer be grappled. Right, but so it's I already can pull it. you can grab. Yeah. That is. The intention. Yeah, but I think it's also generally supposed to target creatures. Yeah. Stuff that moves. Well, the, I mean, we can easily check the spell pretty quick just to see, make sure. I just realized I'm still flying. Okay, cool. Yeah, your you flight don't. hasn't gone down unless you, you don't think you're taking any damage nope. since then. So let's just make sure what it actually... It, it is creature. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, well, uh, actually... You'll figure it out if it's a creature or not. You, you will. Uh... It come da- comes down to we've been you, you've been really inconsistent with rules on grappling in this form. Well, it's not so much the grappling thing. It's just if that's not a creature and freedom of movement no, affects creatures. No, but just in general, it's... between me being able to grapple stuff and things being able to be grappled within me, it's been very inconsistent. Yeah. So it is starting to get a little bit frustrating. All right, well, <laughs> so. uh, again, the, the not being able to be grappled only applies to you. It doesn't apply to the thing you're not you're carrying or the, the solid thing you're carrying, which is the... the Thing. It's in just this been case, inconsistent. In this case, however, I will say that you do feel that the effect will come over the seed as well. Yeah. Uh, um, it has no movement of its own, so it can't free itself, but yeah. it is no longer able to be caught again, essentially. Yeah. So I am going to try once again to get However, it however, yeah. you dropped your form and you are in midair. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you plan to remedy that problem? Well, I'm currently holding on to the seed. Okay, so you're hanging on to the seed. Okay. So. All right. Wait, also, I'm hoping <coughs> helps in this endeavor. Okay. I'd say uh, with the effect in in, uh, in effect, uh, make a strength check. That is. Might want to roll that again. <laughs> uh, that is a natural 19. Yeah. You manage to put your weight behind it, uh, kind of find a little bit of leverage, and then yank, and the two of you are falling free. I take five damage, gladly. Uh, well, you were a lot higher up than that. I was 15 feet up. 15 feet? Yeah. Huh, okay. I got under the impression you were flying a lot higher than that, but that's okay. Huh. No, I only ever went 15 feet up and moved straight ever okay. since. I'm right. just hovering like three feet. You do feel away. the vines grasping at you, trying to grab you as you go down, but this magic keeps you and the seed uh, out of out of grasp. Yep. Um. And while I'm falling, I let go. <coughs> you let the seed so fall. I, I, I'm basically yanking it. Okay. And that, again, uh, you see the, the vines trying to, and again, kind of twisting around and not able to actually grapple onto the seed as it falls and hits the ground. Cracks open. We'll see what happens in a moment, but that, for the moment, is what happened. Yep. Zakas. I'll float up a little higher, see what I can see. Like, do I see any sign of Elzera? Dragons? The, this is essentially a thick curtain now, as thick as the the uh, the um, the hedge was before. I'm 400 feet. And that also, way. she's 400 <laughs> feet that way. Right. So, but I mean, like, if I float up high enough over. You might see a giant dragon. You, you will mm-hmm. start to see things, but you won't necessarily see her. What's the first thing I see? A dragon? Or? Uh, the first thing actually you see is the is the uh, the floating form of Zora, uh, who has just turned and cast this spell, this brilliant light that that blew over the di- dragon, which you see in front of her. Okay. And you see three dragons behind her, bearing down her position. And they're about. Let me see how far would you have been? About three hundred feet that way. So, yeah, I'm 410 feet Yeah, they haven't caught so. up to you, so. Yeah. Okay, I'll uh, slowly drop back down. 
<laughs> no sign of Alzara. There is dragons, mm. and Zora <laughs> is not looking so good. Okay, is that your that's your move. Yeah, I guess. Do you want to do anything else? <laughs> I don't know. You guys surprise me all the time. So why did he come to you? He could have helped us. I'll I'll go inspect that location where the egg used to be. Okay. <coughs> uh, make an Arcana check. Seventeen plus <coughs> fourteen. You see the so residue 31. sinking rapidly into the ground of what would have been the egg. Uh, this fascinating magical experimentation <coughs> that uh, Emerald had managed to con- conceive, transforming a a soul, one might even say a pure soul, into a vessel a container. But it was not impermeable. It was tough, but not impermeable. However, the energy no longer resides in this. Are you okay? Almost. <laughs> Do you need a minute? Probably. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll hold on. No, no, absolutely. Uh, we will now pause for this dramatic, dramatic moment. Be sure to remember, you, you folks at home, this moment, so that you remember to breathe through one of the to- holes and drink through the other one. I guess. Right. <laughs> you good? Uh, yeah, it's because right. like I'm just getting over a cold, so it's no, like, every now and then it's it like sucks. this random itch in my throat, and it's like no. That little bit of phlegm that just drives you nuts. I know how that feels. Well, like speaking a speaking of that random bit of phlegm, <laughs> so the residue from the egg seems to be here, but the energy that powered it no longer is. Um, what is left behind essentially is like a. It was an emulsion. Um, you flash back to the device that you'd seen, uh, and part of it had been powdered version of the bones that had been involved. Another part had been a pulverized version of that metal, which had been Im- imbued with this this uh, this magic. But the third component, the soul component, has vanished, leaving the the, the now a colorless uh, residue behind. Um, energy is not usually destroyed entirely. So it may have gone somewhere else, but whatever was powering this shield is gone. I'll take a vial and like scoop up some of the residue before it okay. disappears into the ground. Yeah, I'd say you get it's a bit dirty. You, you'll have to clean it out the, later, but you have a little bit of the residue. It's almost like it's like a, a faintly milky substance, uh, fairly thick like sludge. Um, back around to the top. Uh, oh, sorry, overhead. Uh, as you had seen the set of the stage before, presumably she was so focused on Givenetta, um, something you would actually be able to notice a little bit from where you are, uh, as uh, Zora lets out a scream as the three dragons that were there converge on her. Uh, it will not be a pretty scene, but I will roll just to see. They all, they all might roll ones. They did not. They've already not rolled enough ones to. Oh, sorry. Actually, no. She's the one that has to roll. Twenty. Because it's a defense against a breath weapon. Uh, there's no twenties there. Uh, yeah. No. And it was a disadvantage because she didn't see it coming. Um, you hear the sound of the acid, the breath of three dragons converge on her her point. Um, the vines themselves, you feel a shiver around you as the vine themselves kind of recoil from that point and whatever force there was. After following that, you do not hear anything except the hissing sound of the acid as it touches upon those vines. Uh, Clark, something big just happened just over the horizon. It's a shame I can't get to it. Uh, question, mm-hmm. just as a mechanical thing, was the snake killed by the weapon? I didn't land a death blow. Uh, actually, yes. This, the snake was killed by the weapon. Okay. So in that <coughs> case, Shadow, as it seeps into the ground, actually uh, seeps up your... Well, by your leg and up the shaft of the weapon. Okay. I'll regain a charge then. Yep. Uh, Clark will turn to the other lads that are nearby. Um, I'm assuming Radix is unhidden now? Nope. She's still hidden. Maybe hop up on the table and have a gander. See what he can see. Okay. Uh, around you is ruin. This spot of beauty that you'd come into before, 
uh, now seems to have been completely obliterated. Return perhaps to the wild state it had been before Zora had tamed it, or perhaps even worse, with a melted slag which, uh, which uh, Zakis is looking into, the only remains of that single point of healthy energy that had been here. There are no bodies aside from the brief moment that the snake was still there. Mm. Uh, he'll hang it on that table, um, okay. and that'll be it. Um, if I hold the vial up to the vines, does it keep them away? If it's healthy energy, like... Uh, doesn't seem to have an effect. Okay. Uh, both of you do notice as Radix stumbles out of those trees, uh, victorious over the creature that had been directly in front of her, although it is now dissipated since then. She looks ragged, uh, and but you can see that in a weird sense, she looks more like those vines than they do. Her skin is now wrapped in in uh, those thorns, now looking more like what they had been in the in the vines themselves than her own. Uh, she stumbles forward to you um, with a, a wide-eyed, shocked expression on her face. You're okay. I'm alive, I think. That's good. And she just looks at the devastation of this grove. And you kind of feel that little bit of... of because it had been a beautiful place that she discovered. And she had seen her brethren here, and now all of it is gone. Do you know where Alzara went? And if we can get to her? She looks at you kind of blankly. She's not registering anything at this moment. The shock is settling in. The adrenaline, if that's what she has, the equivalent, is starting to wear off. Kujima. I'm just <coughs> watching, see if anything happens. Okay. As you watch around, you see the rest of them still retreating off into the distance. Looks like they're slowly moving out. One of them gets caught. Uh, the one, uh, let's see, uh, white, red, white, gets caught up in the vines. The others do not turn to help him at all. And very, very quickly, you see it consumed and brought in and torn to shreds wow. within the vines. Yep. I'm just holding an action to throw a dart at something if something looks like it looks like him or him is going to get attacked. Okay. Or if just something big and dangerous shows up, <laughs> I'll whip a dart at yes, it. Yes, yes. I think I'm the only one that's even close to real time in the video. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's that uh, he so, was in Something has frame. moved. And I am I'm, oh, <laughs> I am but half a man. <laughs> <coughs> oh, not too far. Oh. Hello, friends. Yeah, I'm Yes, excellent. There we go. Podcasting, everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> this is what budgets are bad for. Uh, if someone wants to up my budget, that sounds please vaguely, donate. That sounds vaguely dirty. Um, and we move forward to Alzera. I know. You I see it. Seed. You see it there, cracked, sitting at your feet. What do you do? Does anything happen about it? Not at the moment. Make a nature check. Not 20 for 28. Woo! Nice. As you sit there looking at the seed, memories flow back to you. Working in the greenhouse. Even Briarden, working with him. Those memories are a little painful, but they seem relevant. As you look at the seed and, and realize it is a seed, it needs nourishment, it needs something to grow, it needs to be helped, it needs something. What do you think you can get? <coughs> to spend my actually let's see what can I do the quiet tension yeah. I feel like I should fill this up with something um, those of you at home I hope you're enjoying this strange set of circumstances How far was my grandmother from me? About 120 feet, right? 
Around that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That will not do. And you didn't see it exactly clearly, but you're fairly certain you know what happened. Yeah. Um, don't care much for her, because, like, we wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for her in the first place. So, like, <laughs> uh, just wanted to see. I am going to... cast a third level healing word on it. Okay. What is the word? I love you. I was going to say bird. Uh, 8, 9, 10 plus 4 is 14. Okay. As you reach out with your emotions as much as anything else, looking at it, this poor vulnerable seed, it's split a bit in the middle. You see all those spots where the vines had dug into it, not pulling blood so much as vitality right from it, a little graying around those edges as they start to seal over. Um, and the seed seals on the outside, regaining a little bit of that color, and then cracks a bit wider. But you see now that the crack inside contains a small green shoot. It seems to be growing. Uh, I am then going to use my action to, like, try to help bury it. Okay. Um, You're a little exhausted, but I'm not going to have you roll at this advantage because that would be kind of mean. But <laughs> to, to plant a seed is not that difficult. But you kind of dig back into that instinct. The world has vanished from you now. The, the immediate danger of these vines that seem to tremble, almost holding back now uh, whatever's happening. As you slowly pull the mound of dirt, gray dirt, lifeless now, whatever moss you had walked in on, nothing more than a, a graying dried out uh, specter of its former self and then you put it into the ground leaving space for that little shoot which as you're doing this grows another inch and another and you pat the dirt down maybe reflect for a moment Zachis, what are you doing? I am uh, thinking about what to do <laughs> Okay. Do you guys have any ideas? Nope. Clark just shrugs. Yeah, I go over and just sit down next to Clark, waiting for whatever happens next. Radix, can you tell which way Elzara went? Um, she or seems a bit shocked. You can try a persuasion roll to, to bring her out of that. It's okay, you're alive. We won, for now. We just have to find Elzara and the egg. Eight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're not getting through, but she seems to be staring off in this direction at something. Um, I'll, I'll look wherever she's looking. And you kind of look at her and look back, and you notice there's a tear that stripping down her, her her eye. And then a smile crosses her face. And the ground begins to rumble, shaking violently. Uh, each of you make a dexterity save. Oh, heck. Ten. <laughs> Twenty-six. Sixteen. 21. Okay. Zachis, you're caught off guard as the ground shakes like a ship at sea, heaving massively, twisting and turning. Um, you're not sure what's going on, but you do see that all of the vines that are around you are waving in and out themselves, almost seeming to ripple and shake like they are not made of vines, but are made of stone, and they start to crack and crumble and fall apart. Do I land on my butt? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you fall over. Um, Elzera, you feel this at the center of the storm. And you see as the chute throws up about a foot, suddenly getting about four or five inches around. A tree now, almost. But now you also see the ground thrown up underneath as though roots are growing rapidly below you. There's a scream overhead as Givanetta cries out, uh, Yes! 
Let the tree live. Surprisingly, as you see the tree manifest in seconds, it goes from that one shoot to the, the actual tree to bursting upward. All the other trees seem to lean out of the way, almost as if they're obeying it. The vines that were twisting throughout all of this fall to pieces around, devoid of life. Um, you can feel the shoots moving underground, grabbing more and more ground. Around you, small elements of green moss start to grow, uh, and a twisting vine, this time a deeper green, but not like the ones that have there, no thorns, grows around the base of the tree, and a yellow flower opens in front of you. As the tree now, 20 feet tall, in an instant, in a blink, 40 feet tall, you can now hear the rest of the forest seeming to react to this. Trees are falling over as if dead and then being consumed by the ground around you as this tree seems to split up and continue to go. Um, you can see now the, the dragon starting to circle around with the others as well, uh, laughing joyously, strangely. Um, no sign of Zora at this point. Um, this goes on for seconds. It's hard to say. In front of you stands a tree, now fully mature, 50 feet across. It has displaced everything around it. This is now a clearing. All of those vines are falling away. Does my shield come shooting back? The, the shield, <laughs> yes, does come shooting back and immediately kind of uh, hovering beside you, kind of hovering almost between you and the tree, <laughs> trying to dissuade anything from coming closer to you. Um, there is a sound like a lightning crack uh, as the tree grows higher and higher and now it seems to touch the very roof of the place, the cave that you are in, and does not stop, crashing through it as well. Stones start to fall from the sky, uh, smashing down, destroying many of the trees around you, which themselves have grown bitter, uh, not bitter, but, well, maybe bitter, uh, brittle and gray and fallen away to kindling. Um, the, uh, the dragons continue to circle. You now can see through a suddenly cleared woods at this center of all the attention with Elzera standing, uh, well, yeah, standing, you didn't fall over, standing at its base. Um, I miss, how are you looking at the tree? <coughs> what reaction is getting from you? I'm just <coughs> touching it. Okay. Mm. You can feel its vitality, its life, its movement. Uh, even as you're touching it, you can feel it growing and expanding. Um, the weirdness of the bark around the tree as it starts to grow up around your hand, but not in a capturing motion, as you feel the individual pieces of bark growing up like a hand beneath yours. The effect seems to radiate out from here seems to still be continuing. A minute, a two, two minutes have gone by. What are you doing? I'm making my way towards where the big tree in the commotion is. Are you guys coming with me? Clark will turn to Arban and say, so when we're done here, what do you want to eat first? Just about anything. Yep. Clark will take out his uh, whetstone and start sharpening. Okay. Are you walking at the same time? Or? Oh, he's sitting on the table. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the tree, but I mean, that's long, long away through woods that want to kill us, so. I thought the woods were like, no. they're clearing now. They're clearing now. Yeah, the, those vines are falling away and dying. The trees themselves are starting to crack and move away, opening it up. Yeah, I'm not moving through there until it's gone. Is it? I thought it was gone. Smart. Uh, it is in the process of clearing. Okay. It's easy enough now to see where Alzara is and gotcha. where that tree is, with her hand on the tree, and you can see the. Her hand is slightly submerged. I don't know if you're pulling your hand away at all. Uh, it feels warm to the touch, like a tree which has found sun for the day after the end of a long, warm summer summer day. If it's not all clear, then I'll, I won't go in. I, th I thought you said it was a clearing. It is. It is clearing. Okay. It is clearing. So clearing, but not a clearing. Okay. <laughs> We're rapidly just, uh, falling away. Um. Another sound of thunder as the, the branches at the top split open and f go in different directions now, again through the roof, but also seem to spread out 
uh, as you now see the tree in front of you, is 20 feet wide. The branches must reach 100, 200 feet in each direction, as it just feels like this entire canopy is being drawn around you. Green and life is returning here. You see a butterfly fly in and expect, inspect the flower, land on it. It dies. <coughs> I can't shoot that far. And no penalty. <laughs> what do I see uh, beyond the roof? Uh, beyond the roof, you don't see anything. Okay. It is just piercing through the sol solid stone. Uh, however, a single shaft of light is starting to peer through where it first pierced through that stone. Cool. And it looks like cool moonlight. And then another shaft of light from another place where it pierced. Radiant sun. Another shaft, which looks gray like a cloudy day. Uh, and it continues to grow. Um, you watch as Givanetta, leading her brood, fly up towards one of those shafts of light. And at first it seems like an illusion, but then you realize just how large that is on the other side, as all of them fly right through one of those shafts of light and are no longer visible. You can feel the vibrancy and thrum of this tree connected to so much. Make a um, let's make an arcana check. Uh, that is a sixteen. Sixteen. You pause on that thought for a moment. It does feel like it's vibrant and full of connection, like trees do in a forest. You know they're connected. Mm -hmm. You know that there are ways to travel through them. Mm -hmm. But this is more than that. This is connected to everything. After several minutes, the ground stops shaking. The tree now has formed an elaborate bark at the bottom. It does not appear entirely smooth, but has a vaguely oval shape on the surface of its front. The tree now is 40 feet wide. Am I still flying? Uh, how long does flight last? For an hour? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah still 10 flying. minutes, I think. 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes? Yeah. yeah, you're just at the end of it. You know the skip so will come to an end soon. Okay. But as the shaking stops, you are now standing in a clearing. Very few trees. And what trees you do see now poking up through the, the uh, grass are small little, little branches. I'll hover as far, as far as I can towards the tree. <laughs> well, I know it's going to end soon, so I don't want to be—I don't want to be like too far up off the ground. Sure. <coughs> you find Elzara standing there with your hand still at the tree, or have you moved yeah. off? Yeah, it would still be there. Um, you planted it. I kind of ignore Zacchaeus because I'm in my brain. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to slowly take my hand off the tree and walk towards... You find it, it needs to be tucked a little yeah. bit. And you pull your hand off the tree and wrapped around your finger in delicate leaf green and wood red, or wood brown, I should say, is a ring. Uh, I go towards where uh, my grandmother would have died, around in that area. Yeah, there's not much left of the trees that were there. Yeah. Um, you don't <coughs> see a body. Do I see her staff at all? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Item. <laughs> uh, does her staff survive? Is there loot? Uh, yeah. You find it there sizzling still from the acid that's around it um, you see that on the top um, where there were those those uh, small branches that had once formed into a hand they've all kind of withered and into the trunk itself but you do find it there uh, I will take it okay um, you feel a thrum of power running through this and I will go back to the tree okay and I'm just going to stand here and think just okay. kind of overwhelmed. There's some small branches on the lower levels that kind of move like they're in a breeze somewhere. And one of them kind of taps on your shoulder, almost a reassuring gesture. 
I'll look up and see. Did I notice at all uh, which shaft of light the dragons went through? Uh, make a perception check. Eleven plus. Are you are you 13. still you're still poisoned as well? So. Uh, and exhausted. Two. And exhausted. Okay, so I, yeah. I, I, I didn't see You're not sure which one they went up. And now when you look up, you can see there are dozens. Some of them small, some of them large. Each one emanating a different quality of light. Eight. Some of them seeming to emanate a darkness. Yeah. Can I tell anything about that? Or? From here, no. Okay. It's hundreds of feet up. But I mean, the fact that there's like... You can make an arcana check. Yeah. At disadvantage. Eight and nine, so that's... Plus 14. 22. You look up, and it's completely unnatural. If this was the roof of a cave that got pierced, there would not be different qualities of light. There's no way that makes any sense in that term of things. But then the name Yggdrasil comes back to your mind. The world's tree. The tree which binds the worlds together. Those may very well be openings to other worlds. Or, at the very least, other places. Yeah. Places that are not the shadow. Maybe. As you gather there around the tree, did you come up to the place, or are you staying back? He has no reason to leave. <coughs> okay. Really. After a spell of being alone on the bench, he might get up and walk, but he'll be the last one to move. Hmm? Kazam is still there. As long as he's he's got a companion, he'll hang tight. Both of you are sitting there, kind of seeing all this in the distance. You didn't notice when they arrived, but sitting beside you is a a sprightly young man. Looks to be human, well-dressed, somewhat familiar to you. Well, I had a dart prepared to attack. Do I recognize this guy before I throw something at him? Uh, You've not seen him before. So do you recognize him? What's your instinct? <laughs> Does he look even mildly offensive? Okay. No, he seems to have a, a a smile on his face. He looks rather amused with everything. Hmm, that can be offensive in its own, but okay, <laughs> I'm gonna not stab him yet. Okay, I will look to Clark though. Uh, Clark will say, "Who goes?" Oh, you know me. We're good friends now, you and I. You are, after all. One of my, um, let's say, officers helping me out from here and there. I'm going to throw a dart at him. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Roll disadvantage. I should have stayed. I'm not taking the minus five on this one. Natural 20 and natural one. (laughs) Oh, wow. Um, you find that the dart uh, was heading straight at him and just sort of veers off. <laughs> now, no, no, no need to overreact. I don't know, you seem like a jerk. I've been called worse. Probably. Let's just say I keep my eye on the world. Now I can keep my eye on this one, too. How exciting. It's been a long time since I've been able to come here. Thank you for that. I know you didn't directly do it, but... I still want to credit you a little bit. Mm. Clark will raise the glaive and bring it down. Okay. Roll with disadvantage. Sure. Uh, nine both ways. Eighteen to hit. Eighteen? Yep, that's a dead-on hit. Okay. Passes right through him. Okay. Now, now, now. That's not no sort of... Uh, no sort of thank you for gifting you with this weapon, after all. I thought you were seeking out my colleagues, after all. Perhaps I'm being a little too obtuse. I'm going to detect magic. Okay. Bright, brilliant magic. All of it. Hmm. Don't know what it means, but he's all chock full of magic. Maybe he's a god or something. (coughs) Clark takes the glaive and drops it. I've never really liked that name, but if it makes it easier for you. Let's just say I'm a god. Okay. (laughs) Clark throws the glaive at him. Okay, he catches it. It's a fine weapon. He twirls it as if it's a small piece of wood. Are you done with this? I think you have more work to do. You're very good with it. And he just calmly hands it back to you. Clark doesn't take it. 
He st- sets it down. It stands up on its own. Do I notice that commotion going on from near the tree? Um, yeah. Yeah. They're not that far away because now everything is cleared off. And you see there's somebody else who's standing there. A lot of commotion. Now that I see Elzera is ignoring me, I'll just walk back. I mean, we're we're, we're under no threat of being melted by dragons because they all left for some other world. Is it like an actual clearing or is it like a clear cut with like five feet of dead trees? It's like a clearing as if the trees have all vanished. Okay. They all basically fell over and disintegrated. Uh, it is like away? a new woods. How far away are they? About 100 feet. 150 feet, I think, at this point. Hello! Hmm. Who's this? Your friends seem to be doing all right. Nice tree. I really like that tree. I've missed it. It's been so long since we had it back. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, names. I always hate names. You may call me... What was the one I last used? Ah, Marius. Marius. The, the god Marius. Oh, there's that word again. If you insist, yes. So uh, what brings you to this um, now fine establishment? <laughs> uh, let's just say the door finally opened. My influence here was very minimal, and I've been annoyed with that. I'm going to roll a perception check to see if I'm actually seeing any of this. Okay. Just, so, mm. nope. Okay, you're kind of preoccupied at the moment. It's, I mean, we're just, it's I, I not that far away. We're just kind of standing there talking, anyways, yep. except for the occasional. I, I, I just also can read books. Yeah. So. Yep. I mean, like, we're like 150 feet away, too. Door. So the lips are like the tiny little dot. The world tree, all the punctures in the ceiling, they are gateways to another world. Oh, more than that. Oh. Everywhere the tree touches now is connected. Excellent. That's going to cause a lot of chaos. <laughs> yes, but I can live with that. <laughs> Can they get home? Where, where were you before now? Uh, Which world? A bit of here, a bit of there. Can they get home now? Ooh, I think so. Good. It's a rather nasty climb from here, but I'm sure that you could probably do it. Probably mm. won't even die. They can fly. Oh, we don't even have to climb. Uh, clever. I like it. What's your problem? Uh, Clark draws the seal and tries to plunge it into his heart. Okay. Uh, I failed on the roll. Okay. Uh, it was a disadvantage anyways. You find yourself unable to... Oh, really that's with, that's with the disadvantage. Okay. Otherwise, it would have been a crit. Um, it actually stabs right into him. He looks down at it. You've got to do better than that. Have I angered you? Uh, Clark steps forward with the blade out. <laughs> oh, He's a oh, you wound me. <laughs> oh. No, really. Have I angered you? Yes. Oh. Well, that was not my intent. It's a bad habit that I've had for most of my life, though. So many people seem to take such umbrage. Sorry, he's allergic to smoke. Oh, well, that's difficult to change. (coughs) What have I done to offend you? I'm here. Wait, you two know each other? It's Marius. I'm pretty sure Marius knows everybody. Uh, He's also been seeking me out. Oh. Hmm. Flippy coin. Yeah, Clark will later. take the coin and throw it at his feet, too. Okay. He picks it up. He tosses it in the air. It rotates. It stays there for a while. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? Chance. It can put you in the right place at the right time. And when it does, the right things can happen. He looks up at the tree. But, of course, nothing is for certain. Sometimes you have to give people a little extra nudge. I nudged here and there. That's all. Clark sits down. I take it then you no longer wish to be one of my uh, associates. My purpose here is done. Remove me. Oh, your purpose is far from done. It's not for me to decide what your purpose is. I've never really liked doing that. That's more my sister's point of view. She's all about control. I prefer manipulation. Still, her way does work quite a bit. It help with mom, after all. (laughs) Oh? But that's another story. Have you finished here yet? I... No. No, I think you haven't. 
Well, if Mother is ever to come back, you've got a lot more to do. I can help you if you like, but you don't have to. If she returns, what happens? Clark looks to Zacchaeus. What do you gain if she returns? You don't seem to be, I've to be the sentimental her. type. And frankly, a lot of the things that she left behind that my sister and I had to take up were dull, more suited to her temperament than mine. Her also, without her here, I found that there's, well, too much is being taken over. I seek to produce a sort of balance, because if you don't have balance, it's so hard to have imbalance. Mm -hmm. uh, just question for the DM. Mm -hmm. Your mother is Paluxia, correct? Uh, do you have religion trained? No, but I mean, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen the murals and the Temple of the Mazani. Yeah, from what, from mm -hmm. what you've seen so far, uh, that would be the natural conclusion, okay. that Paluxi was the mother of these two. Okay. Uh, you do know her bones are scattered throughout this realm, correct? Yes. They sort of made their way to my father, I suppose. Pichuro. What's... Apparently he's not doing so well, according to some murals we, we've encountered. No, he's doing quite badly, actually. He's Why more morose than your friend over there. <laughs> when you turn to look at Clark, he's looking right at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why is that? And can we turn that around somehow? Uh, Should we turn see, that around somehow? There's rivalries that get unsettled. And then there was an angry god, conspiring daughter, a capricious young god who didn't exactly do things on both sides. What? Kushai was saying. What? He was asking you a question. What? Ironbound, I need the bag, please. What bag? Which bag? The bag. The one we left back at the temple? Bastards. What? <laughs> you were part of the decision-making process. <laughs> Yes. Clark gathers his things, mm -hmm. pulls Lucille out of that guy, <laughs> shake, shake, <coughs> and starts walking. Okay, what direction? Uh, towards the temple. Okay. Uh, give me a survival roll. Sure. Uh, with that. <coughs> uh, 13. 13? Yeah. It's probably vaguely over that direction somewhere. That's where he heads. Okay. Where are you going? I'm gonna get the bag. All oh, right, the bag with that was rupturing because of a thing. Yeah. Um, well, what are you, what are you up to now? I don't think he wants you to come with us, but I mean, I'm, I'm fairly certain you know. Flattered, I'm sure, but I've got a few thousand things to do. Mm -hmm. Clark, a few people to see. Yeah. It was nice to know you. And um, you. I head what? towards the tree. If I can, I'll mark a way out. Sounds good. Oh so dear, uh, such chaos. You can see him grinning. So these I'm just sitting at the bottom of the tree with the staff across my lap and just kind of meditating. Okay, are you facing the tree? I'm leaning up on the tree. Okay. As you lean back, you feel the, the bark behind you. It's warm. It's comfortable. It shifts slightly. It seems to move to pair with your back nicely. That is so creepy. <laughs> One of the branches lowers down. The vine wrapping around it releases a single yellow flower in front of you. I'm just going to sit here and think over the, okay. the events. The tree behind you echoes like this, like a massage chair. No, it doesn't have that fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I am Groot. If you'll excuse me, I think I have a few words with him. Uh, yes, but uh, and he reaches one last over question. out of the standing, the standing staff. Yes. The dragons escaped. Do you know where they went? And also, does oh, this mean? I'm sure I could figure it out if I really cared. Assuming we can escape, that means unsavory characters like Arvax and Saldog can also go through the doors willy nilly. The tree connects all the worlds. So now they're all connected here. This place was once a terrible prison. A dump. We've seen it. I mean, it had its purpose. You have to 
crush down bones to make fertilizer, or mm -hmm. so I've heard it said. You know, don't really bother with it myself. I just make the tree appear, not this tree, sadly. If I had that ability, it would have been solved a long time ago. So this tree, it remains here forever? <laughs> I had nothing lasts forever. Not even God's. It remains here for several centuries, millennia? Mm, it could be destroyed. Well, let's not do that until we see. It takes out a tiny hatchet. <laughs> Uh, if, if you could bring our friend back to us, that would be awesome. Oh, I won't be bringing him at all. Hmm? He might bring himself. Hopefully. Maybe you want to have a word with him. Well, yes, but he was kind of giving me a dirty look. Although, this happens all the time, what the hell? <laughs> I'll, I'll follow. Okay. He kind of leans on, <laughs> on the uh, on the uh, scythe, amused, and watching what's going on. Because, Ima, you see that... Uh, that Elzera is leaning up against the tree, focusing on what you recognize as that staff that the other druid was carrying. Okay. Um, on the walk in, I've been trying to size up some sort of scale to the tree. Probably unsuccessfully. Part of the problem is you're not entirely sure if it stopped growing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem to be making a huge difference in the base anymore, but the base is more yeah. big than some towns you've been in. Is there a lot of branches that go to the side? Yes. Or is it mostly tree? Um, only about five feet up is there anything that would be considered bare trunk, and after that there are branches at every interval at that point. Okay. Sometimes multiple. Dimension door. Okay. 500 feet up, then dimension door. 500 more feet, and then I'll climb. Okay. <laughs> Uh, after the first 500 feet, you look down and see the breadth of this tree. Uh, while the base itself is almost the size of some villages, the part above is larger than most of the islands you've been on. Yep. I'll, uh... Hmm. What would be... Um... Clark, do you have any symbols on him? Uh, there's a few. That would on, be the most prominent one. One wound over his eye, and there's a dead box with a symbol on it, on his belt. He'd, uh, he'll carve a crude version of the dead box's symbol onto the trunk. About like this big, it's still tiny compared to it, but if they can find that, that's the start of the path. You're vandalizing it already. Make a uh, performance check. Or if you have uh, <coughs> wood carving tools Actually, or a proficiency or anything like that. Just so he'll, he'll, he'll start that, and then he'll just... No. He'll rest. Because trying to climb this is going to be a waste of time if he's exhausted. So okay. he's just going to go to sleep on the... All right. You make branch. yourself... A, in a, you find a convenient sort of elbow on one of the tree massive branches that will easily cover you. Mm -hmm. Zach, as you catch up to Clark. Mm -hmm. But I let uh, Marius... Go before me. Oh, he's waiting for you to go. He's oh. not moving. Okay, I'll, oh, no. I'll go. He he's watching this shit show. <laughs> yep. And I know he is, and it's like I'm <laughs> a bastard. It's like Sosoro, but like He's the god of chaos. Yeah. It's That's like Sosoro, but like slightly less of an asshole than Sosoro so far. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so far they all seem to be jerks except for the demon lord and the dead god. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking we should go see the demon or demon lord next. But anyway, that's inside player mind. Clark, so, hmm? yeah. where are you going? Good idea. Going to the temple. But for what purpose? Get the bag. And the pillar inside it. Yeah. Uh, and then what? I'm going to sell it. To who? To Marius. Well, surely. He... Hey, Marius. Is he following us? No, nope, he's still where he was. He waves. Oh no, you're doing fine. <laughs> what if he doesn't even want it? He'll want it. Mm. He's a god. Why can't he just get it himself if he wants it? Sometimes the act of giving is more important than the gift. Okay, and why do you want to give it to him? He's my ticket out of here. And by that, I mean, uh, I'm assuming you mean our ticket, right? Sure. You, you, do, you do realize, uh, to get out of here, we can simply fly through one of the holes in the ceiling like the dragons did. Nope. Why not? Because I don't fly. What if you could? 
<laughs> I'd I can rather make, not. No, you can but fly. I can make you fly. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. We can all, together, Clark draws as a group sacks. of friends, oh. I'll step away, we can all, together, <laughs> fly through the holes. Which one? You hear a call from the back there. I'll figure that out later. Good plan. <laughs> but anyway, I've read about countless, countless Peanut walls gallery. and And I'm sure by observing the various different holes, then we can certainly figure out the correct one to lead us back home. Feel free to fly up there and find the perfect hole for yourself. I'm getting the bag. We could just fly. All of us. Leave. Right now. Together. I'm, I'm sure Marius would possibly follow us, but I mean, the what, what can of, we do? He's a god. The spirit of Amrin admonishes you for giving up our other bag of holding. What? <laughs> That's a bag of holding, man. Yes. Yeah, it's like the most useful item ever. Yeah, it's my bag of holding. <laughs> right. Like, what about Pajero? Do you think we should meet him at some point? He seems to have something to do with the state of this place. That ship may have sailed. Okay. Anyway, I'll catch up with you if you want company on your quest to retrieve the bag. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. And I'll go back to Marius and say, like, uh, he wants to sell you one of the pillars. Oh, that's intriguing. I wonder if that'll work. I, I wonder as well. He's being unreasonable. <laughs> Is he? I mean, he's seen a lot of unreasonable things. Maybe the only way to be reasonable now is to be unreasonable. Mm. <sighs> Alright, fine. I'll go get the bag. Oh, not crazy. He's sane in a crazy world. <laughs> or the other way around. One of the two. So I'll just go catch up to Clark again and okay. go on an adventure to retrieve our bag. You see the two of them walking off. We'll be right back. And beside you, you saw Poof as... Guzaima vanished. What is going on? There was nobody around you. Oh, shit. Although, they're still visible, just... Yeah, they're just yeah. over there. Yeah. Just like a half block away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clark's got reduced speed. So you, see a, you, see another, you see another person standing with Clark's uh, scythe. It seems to be leaning on it. Kind of like it's a, a prop or a. He kind of waves as you see him. What? You hear a voice from beside you. Strange, isn't it? And he's standing beside you. What's going on? Too many things at once. I've yes. always had that problem. You always seem to have this limited scope of thought, and it's just, it's hard. It really is. And he turn, looks up and he waves to himself, who's standing over there. A thousand feet up, shadow coin. A lot happened today. Did it? Seems to me only a couple of things really happened. How are you doing? I don't know. That's rough. Still, he knocks on the tree. This one's pretty nice. It is. Hmm. Picks one of the flowers. Well, I haven't seen one of those in a while. Kind of tucks it behind the ear. Still, they're going to get in trouble. Probably. He's probably already in trouble. Well, then he gets to sleep by now. <laughs> probably. I should probably go keep them out of trouble. It's okay, though. Know. This tree's still going to be here. I mean, if no one cuts it down, of course. Again. Fair enough. And so will he'll, he'll be here too. Yeah. He'll be. I hope he doesn't hate me when I have to go to the bathroom up here. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take a while. It is kind of like climbing a skyscraper, though. Mm -hmm. There's literally like room sized spaces that are just the tree branches themselves. I am an expert in athletics and acrobatics. Mm hmm. And also able to sleep <laughs> while <laughs> climbing. Um, I just don't know what to think anymore with everything. It gets a little confusing for such tiny minds. I understand. 
If I could explain it all to you, I probably would, but I think you probably would go insane. I mean, it happened four times already, so I figure the fifth time's not going to be any different. You know what they say. Doing the same thing over and over again is akin to being a god. No, that's probably not what they said. I should make them say that. Who knows? I just kind of look at him weird because I've missed the entire conversation. Yeah, of and he literally is standing beside you <coughs> and standing over there leaning on, on yep. the uh, weapon. She doesn't question it. She's just a tree literally, literally just grew in front of her. And what do you know of Clark? I'm intrigued. I don't know much about him. He's kind of a complicated fellow, don't you think? Yeah. I mean... Or maybe he's too simple. I, I always get those two confused. I think he's doing what he needs to do to take care of the people he cares about, and I admire that. Hmm. That sounds pretty nice. I should try that sometime. Nah, that sounds too petty. <laughs> Still, it's nice to be able to tread these woods again. It's been a long time. I've got to leave you now. You've got a choice to make. I wouldn't want to be you. He kind of laughs. Walks over to his other, his other self. No, thank you. As say both of them at the same time. And then they start a tug of war over the weapon. I thought he was told you it was my time to hold it. Technically it is, which is also my time. This is very confusing. I get up and I start following Clark and them. I'm like, we should take a rest before we go anywhere. Elsa has a point. I'm a good Elsa <laughs> <laughs> has a point. I mean, I am a little bit tired. Rest. A little bit a lot. I'll be back this way in a while. What if the Beholder is there? What if the Beholder and his army of freakish monsters are there like they were the first time we, we went into the temple? Was the whole of the festering brought down, or just the local area? I mean, from the point of view you have, you can see that there's a massive gap around, and the remainder of festering still seems to be there, but it's changing. Okay. Um, you can see that where there were the tight-knit branches before, they're loosening up, almost becoming a normal forest, strangely enough. Uh, as the influence of this seems to move out, it's in a radius... So mm. as it gets bigger and bigger, the, it does seem to get slower and slower as changing. Okay, I get a lot. Of, I don't know how far away the temple actually is from here, yeah. but it wasn't a huge distance <coughs> because we we're going to the woods to get here. The so. biggest problem was the fact that it was surrounded by the uh, the river, mm. Mm. and you can still see it seething along the edge of the forest. So. You catch up to them and tell them they should rest. Meanwhile, on the trees, you rest. Yeah, I'm sleeping. I take and a you're rest. Continue to climbing, climbing up. Is that your intention? No, I, I, I laid down on the branch and right. went to sleep. But once you've rested, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he'll keep. I uh, basically once, once he's rested and can properly uh, work, he'll carve a, that symbol into the side of the tree near where he is, and if they find it good if they don't. He'll basically use, I just carve small symbols like that every like 25 30 feet. Okay. Uh, after that, but only like about this size after that one. But And yeah, he'll just keep climbing up. And As you get closer and closer to where it intersects with the rock you can see that everywhere the branch has connected, there's a small form of light. At this point, thousands of them. Well, I have some sticks and some coins and a small piece of string, so uh, I will start marking. Uh, let me mark it. Anyways, I'm gonna head towards one of them and stop short of it and tie one of the. Uh, well, hmm. yeah, basically as a. String with a green feather on it, and uh, just gonna tie the green. Well, yeah, it's just a pretty feather. Uh, he'll tie that to the end of the end of a stick, okay, and then just put the stick into the light, okay, 
until he can't see the feather and then try to pull it out and see if the feather comes back unchanged. He'll yell hello at the light. <laughs> How loud is he yelling? Loud as he can. Well, he'll yell low. Uh, just go, hello. If there's no response, he'll yell louder. Okay. Uh, if there's no response after he's kind of hit maximum, that's like, okay. Well. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't really need to know what the color is. Um, yeah, I mean, if I can bug that. He'll basically move, like, forward, like, five feet. Stick mm -hmm. it in. Pull it back as long as the feather keeps coming back and it's There's not no change in the in the stick at all. Yep, as long as it's not like a a portal where he pokes it through, but then it's appearing just knowing like some other world and he pulls it back and it's there's like nothing. <laughs> well, or just it's snapped because uh, of that. And basically, as long as it once that's reasonably safe, he'll keep just slowly moving forward until either he's in a new area or something weird happens. So he's walking into the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. He'll check it out. Um, He's just trying to see if there's a likelihood he'll be uh, he'll be able to walk back through. Okay. Uh, but as long as it appears like there is a chance, then yeah. Yeah. You step through the light. You find yourself in... It's vague. There's no dimensions to it. It's just pure light around you. That same light, like being caught in the middle of a sunbeam. and It's so bright you can't see anything else. Except at the very end, you can see a small, darker spot. I might not be able to see that because I have a vulnerability, uh, not a vulnerability, but I, I, have, dis I have disadvantage yeah. when I'm in yeah. bright. So yeah, I'm you're having a hard time seeing it, though. So. Kind of vaguely spots on your on your eyesight. Hmm. Hello? No echo, nothing, no sound. You know you spoke and you can feel it inside you, but it doesn't feel like it reverberated hmm. off of anything. Well, he'll go, actually, what's, what does it feel like under his feet? Solid. There's no surface, though. Doesn't feel like any texture. Hmm. He'll feels try to go back. Feels vaguely warm. Mm hmm. He'll try to go back. Make uh, a. Uh, acrobatics roll. 22. 22. You find that the way back, it's small, like pinprick small. But as you kind of maneuver <laughs> yourself into it, you weirdly find yourself fitting through the hole and back at the top of the tree. So it's like a pinprick portal? Sort of. Or it, it, it defies dimensions. It only seemed to be really small, and yet you could move your entire body through it without too bad. It just felt like you had to distort yourself to get through it. Hmm. But I come back, and I'm on the same branch. Looks like it was that. It's hard to tell. There's not very much difference. Between yeah, them. I didn't think to carve a symbol into it, but I'll, I'll, I'll put an X on it. Okay. Uh, and then I'll go back in, because I... Hmm... Yeah, no, I got no rope or anything, so I'll just walk in and hope I can find my way back. <laughs> okay, so you walk and you continue to walk. Yeah, at least I mean, he'll walk for a minute or so, and if it's still just the same stuff, uh, if he can find that gray spot and move towards it, if it gets bigger, that's fine. If after a couple of minutes it's still small, then it's like, yeah, this is probably a mistake. Okay. As you walk inward and proceed forward, you do notice that there is something which does seem to be growing in size in front of you. You look back and it's almost impossible to see the place you came from, however, as it's receded far into the distance. Well, thankfully, <coughs> I'm a ranger. This is not my chosen land, but he's used to wandering around and hopefully he can find his way back. I mean, so, there are no, no landmarks, no distinguishing features outside from the two ends of this the space. Mm -hmm. He's just keeping his mind on, I'm theoretically moving straight forward, so if I reach that point, decide to turn around, then... One foot of 50 feet. Yeah, basically, one foot forward, and that's all down to his perception and whatnot. So that's what his, is he doing? That's his thought. Is he going out or coming, going all the way? Is he turning um, back? How much bigger has it gotten? Uh, Does it's it, about the size of uh, a hand, a human hand. It's a little bit bigger than yours. It's grown considerably from the small little speck it seemed to be when you first spotted it. Well, I'll go for another couple of minutes, see if I can get close to it. If I still can't tell if I'm actually close to it or whether it's just huge and way off, then I'll turn around. And uh, it, it does grow in size as you move closer to it. It seems to be slightly gray and uh, on opening. It does seem almost as though the light that's in this space is flowing in 
from this opening, like wind. Poke it with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> the stick moves through. Well, I'll attempt to stick my head in it. Okay. You stick your head through and see what looks to be a room about eight feet wide, maybe twelve feet long. Looks like there's several barrels and boxes. You see gray stone on the on the uh, walls. <laughs> kind of smells musty, like a basement. I don't see any writing or labels or anything. Um, you kind of cock your head. You see a label on one of the barrels. It's what script do you know? Common, draconic. Undercommon, deep speech, and thieves can't. It's not one you're familiar with. Um, it looks kind of you know, squarish and uh, functional, but you're not really sure which one. Which ah, one it is? Dwarven. <laughs> it's got to be dwarven. Um, On barrels of ale. Yeah, I'll go through and s then turn around and see if I see a way back out. You did not. Mm. Uh oh. Mm. Put my hand there. Solid stone. Okay. Then I go up and see where I am. Okay, and I think we'll bring it to a close for this evening. Uh, we will put this video up. I will put this video up. Hopefully within this next week. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you've been watching this, and hopefully it's not too... Yeah, it's kind of jumpy. I'll see what I can do. USB ports. Really annoying. Uh, I have to get extras, I guess. I was hoping to avoid this. Anyway, I want to thank all my players for putting up with my strange nonsense, as usual. Uh, and, uh, yeah... Uh, now that we're at the end, we should probably tell people why they can get involved with a bit more. Uh, let's start with you, Jody. If you're on uh, YouTube watching this, please like, subscribe, and ring bells, and tell your friends uh, that we are having a wonderful time here in Omesha. Um, otherwise, you can find us... On the Facebook page. Uh, we have Legend of the Drowned Isles. That's the page where we update if we're playing or not, when we're playing. We're hopefully going to put a schedule up to make it a little easier to find us. We hope for ourselves to be able to find ourselves. But finding ourselves is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Watchers of the Drowned Isles. That is the group where we talk about things. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And now omatia.ca, O-M-M-A-T-I-A dot C-A, where I'll be posting different articles about the world. I'm going to try to get these guys to now post there's a thousand things. worlds. Have fun. And now there's, you know, a thousand worlds <laughs> to choose from. I thought it was bad enough when I only had 55 islands. I was... <laughs> making up and I made up every single one of them. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let people know about it. We'd love to have more people involved. And uh, yeah, I hope you had fun. So that's it. I'm going to see if I can remember which button to press. Bye. Have a good one, folks. Dragon waves at you. <laughs> Let me wait those interminable seconds for the end credits to come up. Sorry for uh, all the coffee. Technology. It is so much not fun. I hit okay, the button twice. I hit the button twice.